Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Live Special number 202, recorded Monday, June 2nd, 2014, the WWDC keynote. Well, welcome once again to, uh, I guess, what is uh, Christmas, New Year's, and the 4th of July all rolled into one for the Apple fan. It is WWDC, the biggest Apple event of the year, the keynote speech coming up in about 15 minutes, and we're going to give you live coverage. Apple is streaming it. In fact, if you have an Apple TV, they've added a channel for it on your Apple TV. And, of course, you can go to Apple.com and get the stream uh, there. We'll be watching that stream live and commenting. This is, uh, let me introduce our panel, and then uh, we'll talk a little bit about what we can expect later today, starting with Mike Elkin, our news director and uh, host of TNT. And you fell in, filled in for me yesterday on Twit. Thank you for doing that. That was really hard, but it was a lot of fun. I had a great time. Yeah, and I wore a suit to a rock festival, and I thought that was uh, wrong. But I fit right in. <laughs> Alex Lindsay is back from Africa. Nice to I am. see you. It's good to be back. Uh, for a host of MacBreak Weekly, of course, longtime host of MacBreak, and yes. uh, another Apple Watcher. Yes, I think we all have Macs here, so we qualify. Actually, Mike <laughs> broke broke out the Mac instead of the uh, iPad today. That's right. I figure go all out. Why not do the expensive <laughs> one? Speaking of iPads, the host of iPad today and uh, i five for the iPhone, Sarah Lane is here, also host of Oh Hello Tech News today. So we all got up a little bit early for uh, a big event. Uh, yeah, why are we here anyway? Until until September and October, when Apple typically announces the iPhone and iPads, this is the the one event. And it's, as as uh, as journalists, this is kind of like um, rainfall after a drought of eight months. I mean, the last Apple event was October of last year. Even if they announce a new icon for iOS, we're going to jump on it. It's gonna, it's big news. Harry McCracken had a great article uh, yesterday at Time. Actually, it was on his new Technologizer blog. He's left yep. Time. Talking about WWDC and setting expectations. This is this is a developers event. This isn't an event that is typically where you announce a lot of new products. Although they have in the past, they have, and I think that it's become more of a public event since they're not doing uh, MacWorld anymore. So they're, you know, I think that this has become one of the the scheduled, the only scheduled event that I know of that Apple really we know Apple's going to do. Is oftentimes we see the only one, one in the they fall. schedule more than a week in advance. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, we have, you know, Mark Gurman of 9to5Mac said there would be new hardware. Others have said there will not be new hardware. One thing we are pretty sure of, in fact, given the pictures we've seen of the lobby at Moscone West in San Francisco where the uh, uh, keynote will be held, there will be an iOS 8. We've seen a big 8. Right. And we've seen a Yosemite, a picture of uh, Half Dome. I think we had talked about or that. Or was it El Capitan? It was El Capitan. Yeah. And that uh, would presumably be OS 10, 10.10. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Three tens. Uh, they could call it OS 30. Um, <laughs> or and that's. 10... Oh, never mind. I can't. I, that's fine. It was something bad you were going to no, say? No, no, I was going to say something bad. And else. that's one of the things they do at these events, really, because it is a developer's event. They talk about the new operating system, because the developers are going to get new hardware in the fall, but they're going to get, uh, more importantly for them, a new operating system. Now, I disagree with Harry McCracken in a small way in that I don't think Apple is as predictable as it used to be. The ways that Apple used to go about deciding where to announce what was dictated by Steve Jobs. And as we've seen by other moves that Apple's been making lately, they're kind of gravitating away from the Steve Jobs Apple and toward the Tim Cook Apple. And maybe Tim Cook is going to decide to announce different types of things at the developers conference. I don't think we really know that. Even with Steve Jobs running the show, it was not predictable. He moved the iPhone announcement from June to September. The, the, these things don't go year in year out the same all the time and for many reasons i think apple doesn't want them to be right. predictable because what you don't want is everyone expecting the iphone launch to be at a certain date and stop buying iphones you know I mean, for even with two the, months. the ipad i mean that apple's mm -hmm. pulled some curveballs already yeah surprised some people yeah in fact they announced uh, the ipad 4 only a few months after six right. months after the ipad 3 angered some people angered me because <laughs> i had to buy you a new one uh, Thanks, by the way. <laughs> I really like it. No, I don't. I don't mind buying many, many, many Apple products, it's a as research. you know. I live to buy Apple products. <laughs> one thing, one piece of hardware we might see is a Beats pair of Beats headphones with an Apple logo on it. This, of course, uh, not a not a surprise given that they announced Friday that the Beats acquisition had gone through. It sounds like the timing is pretty good for 
Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre to take the stage uh, today. And that'll be easy to do. Just roll the celebrities out on the stage, let people know that they're really part of the Apple uh, family, but I don't think we're ever going to see Beats headphones with Apple logos. Yeah. No, they said, in fact, they'd keep the, the brands separate. Absolutely. Um, Alex has set up the question engine. I don't know how much time we'll have for questions, but uh, depending on what goes on. I should just give you some program notes. We're going to cover this live through the end, which will probably be noon Pacific. A couple, we're expecting a two-hour mm -hmm. keynote. Uh, then we'll take a little bit of a break while uh, Andy Anako and Renee Ritchie, hosts of Mac Break Weekly, who are in the room right now, drive up, and uh, we'll do a Mac Break Weekly uh, as soon as we can, as soon as they get here, which is probably about 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. For those who will tune in for uh, iPad Today and Triangulation. iPad Today will be tomorrow, right, Sarah? Yes, tomorrow uh, at the regular time that Mac break would be, so 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Pacific, yeah. uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. And we have a triangulation already in the can with Jeff Pulver, the uh, the guy who really created voice over the Internet single-handedly and founded the, the company Vonage. Um, he is a really interesting fellow. He We pre-recorded that uh, a few weeks ago, and we'll get that uh, on uh, later today is triangulation. So uh, people are hitting hitting it pretty hard. It's fine. The question engine's yeah. doing all right. What yeah, is the getting... what is the URL? Um, it is uh, bitly bit dot ly slash uh, wwdc special, and uh, it looks like we have a lot of action. So um, I think one of our top questions uh, from Hunter, I think it's Hunter uh, Beatty, I think, or Beat um, from Nebraska. What are you looking forward to and hoping to see today? That's a great question. Yes. In fact. That was my next question, Sarah Lane. Yes. What do I What do I want to see today? What are you looking for? You know, I, I, I don't really... Ex Pop quiz time, Sarah Lane. Yeah. Okay. So much pressure. I, I don't really think that we're going to... Uh, uh, if we if we hear about any new hardware, I don't think we're going to see it. Um, I think they might hint at stuff. It was funny. I was at the gym yesterday, and somebody was talking on his smartwatch, and he was, like, clearly dictating a message that he was going to send to somebody. He looked so dumb. And I thought, yeah, I don't know. I mean... It'd be nice if Apple can figure out how to make a smartwatch seem really cool, but I don't really know how that happens. Yeah. Last year, all we could do is say, 2014 will be the year of the iWatch. And the, then people started saying, 2015 will be the year of the sure. iWatch. Yeah. It's not going to be probably today. I don't think so. I don't, I don't expect to see the iWatch. Say, although it makes sense from a developer's perspective to show, here's a new device. Uh, this is how you program for it. This is the kind of thing you could do with it. I mean, this would be the time to show an iWatch or an Apple TV or if you opened up the Apple TV, the current Apple TV, not hardware, but just said, we're going to open this up to developers. We're going to have a watch that's open to developers. Those kinds of things are, this would be a great platform to do that. You may not do it at the keynote. One of the things Apple does is they have, of course, this is a developer's conference. The keynote is just the beginning. Right. There are, there's tracks for the rest of the week. And what often happens, they we're getting a picture now from Moscone Center, people gathering. Uh, the journalists and so forth. This is a very big hall. It can hold almost uh, what, what? What is about it? About two thousand in the 2000? in the main in the. In, this is in Moscone West, I think, in the second floor. This is where Steve Jobs announced the iPad, and that's the iPhone. This is a very big uh, venue. <laughs> so there'll be a uh, at the, the journalists get to go to this and then get kicked out, and then everybody who remains for w the rest mm -hmm. of WWDC is a registered developer and is under NDA. This is not under NDA, but the rest will be. And that for that reason, there are usually blacked out tracks that will be available to developers, and that's in all likelihood where you're going to say things like, uh, here's what the iWatch screen but, but, resolution is. Here's but typically they would it. show this is the iWatch in the, in the keynote, they might, and, then, they might, and then the particulars right. of it would be the thing that comes later. Yeah, there's no way that they would they would f completely not mention a new product like an iWatch and then have developers talk about it, of course, because they would leak like a sieve. Um, but, Leo, I think the other thing that may be one of the most interesting things is the ho home automation. Is There's reports that they may have home automation right. program APIs and so on, and I think that's going to be and health. really I mean, cool we've stuff. seen them build health, a lot right? of health, stuff around health. Book, health iOS 8. Uh, I also expect, uh, I think they might announce a 4K display. They have announced cinema displays at WWDCs in the past. I wouldn't be surprised if they announced a uh, 4K With display since they put that in uh, most recently in 10.9.3. Meanwhile, at the venue, the, the folks have been told to switch their devices to silent. <laughs> Meaning Dear we're, we're getting, getting close. Stop. Will Jimmy Iovine or Dr. Dre take the stage? I say it yes. Better. I think at least Iovine will. I was very, I have to say, and, uh, you know, I, I really was disappointed by the Apple Beats uh, acquisition. And uh, I'm further disappointed when Jimmy Iovine and Eddie Q uh, did an interview at Recode at uh, 
Kara Swisher and Walt Mossberg's event on, uh, I think it was Thursday night. Um, Eddie Q said, the music industry is dying. Uh, Jimmy Iovine said, we're going to bring back the album. It was Steve Jobs who killed the album with a 99-cent track. <laughs> uh, the music industry is most emphatically, the music industry is dying. Music is not dying. And I think that what, this feels like a very reactionary move to bring well, back the music industry well, as we knew it. It was strange because the way that he backed that up was on iTunes over the last year, we saw fewer new album releases than ever. But it's like, how are they going to change the recording industry even though Iovine said, no, we're not going to be a label of any kind. People well, have said we don't want albums. Well, I think what they're going to do mean, is... This, the think, music industry killed the album by putting out a lot of crap. With one or two hits on an album. That's who killed the album. I think what's clear is that the money in the future for the music industry is not going to come from music. And I think uh, they have this thing around in the music business since the t you know, 2007, 2008 called 360 Deals, where instead of a regular record contract, the artist signs a deal to promote all kinds of other stuff, concerts, headphones, you name it. Why don't you bring up the uh, Moscone uh, feed just so we can watch that? They don't need to see our faces. <laughs> uh and we should point out uh, that we will go live. We will play the tr the uh, Moscone feed, but we will be interrupting it. And the weather in Petaluma is beautiful. We're, yes. we're very glad to report that right now. <laughs> yeah, we're having an audio issue that we're working on. So uh, There's an HDCP issue. Maybe we won't take it from the Apple TV. What if you take it from the web instead? That's what we're trying to do. We're, yeah. we're, we're tackling it from both sides right okay. now. But, uh, but if, if I may, just a little more context about the Beats deal. The, the, the music industry business has been changed twice in two big ways in the last decade and a half. The first was by Steve Jobs with iTunes. And the second was by these 360 deals. And Jimmy Iovine was oh. instrumental in that whole program. This, what are you talking about, 360 360 deals? deals is when instead of a record contract, you make you sign a contract for product placements. Right. And, and, and the Beats headphones system is all about celebrities endorsing individual headphones. And, and which has not worked that well. I have to add a lot of celebrities refused to, including Will I Am, who's on the board, uh, Madonna made a 360 deal with Live Nation that was really a concert deal that albums were a follow-on. Mm -hmm. I think the music industry is vital. I just came back from a three-day rock festival in Napa where I saw a lot of unsigned bands that were fabulous. I think the music industry's changed out from under Apple and out from Jimmy, under the music industry and Jimmy Iovine. The last thing we need is a music industry bailout. Well, but I don't, uh, I think that the, I think that some of the stuff that they said was accurate in that uh, I do think that one of the problems right now is finding the new music because we're not listening to radio and we are listening to Spotify um, and we're not... We're, but, but I the agree, problem but is there's no context. There's I no, agree. And Jimmy Ivey is saying the artists, we're going to curate. That's radio. You came from radio. You were a music director. I was a music right. director. That's who picked the music. Today, and I know Sarah is a perfect example, it's our friends who pick the music. We, and, we use RDO because we want to know what our friends are listening to. That's right. And that's always been the best source for music recommendations. Not radio no, not DJs. Really. <laughs> I don't think okay, so. But, As a music director, I don't, I don't agree. You come from so, that background. So, but, but here's the thing is, is that, is that the, um, your friends have a lot of, you know, a variety of things. But, and, and, and there was definitely a lot of corruption even when I was there. Not, I didn't ex get any of it. And I'm very bitter about that. But, um, but the... Uh, um, but the, the issue was, is that you did have someone looking at that music that had a critical eye. So for instance, there was a, um, there was a, you know, you, you want to have these tastemakers that really can hear that song, hear, hear something and, and, and show it to you, um, th that are listening to music all day. And so for instance, there was a guy, 91 X in, in San Diego, the music director was Mike Holleran and every, this is in the early nineties, maybe he's still there. I don't know. Um, Every music director in alternative rock in the early 90s when I was a music director, we all just looked at his playlist. Yep. And if, and if he put something on his playlist, we would all assume... But welcome back to the early 90s. This is not what's going I, on I, today. I, I know it is. I know it, but, but the And that's the is, last thing we want to go back to. That is the Stone Age. I don't think I care what some idiot that I don't know in Hollywood but, but recommends. Are, but are you I want to know what Sarah listens to. I want to know what Baratunde listens to. And that's what you get currently. This is a... Well, but I don't... I, <laughs> Are you average though? I'm what sorry, is the I'm average person? Up. What is the average person? That's want? what if the average. Look, I look at what average people do. They listen to their friends. But but if you look at the top ten for Twitter followers, the top ten includes Katy Perry, Justin Timberlake. You know they follow them. Justin they don't, Bieber. They don't go to them for Justins. music recommendations. By the way, Twitter tried this with Twitter Music. What happened to Twitter Music? Not much. Exactly. They they, they don't. And that's what they want to do with Beats Music. Is all right. Are we getting audio now? All right. 
happened. There's a guy behind a door that's got enough this of a is crack a, they can slide a pizza underneath. Obviously a video. I don't even know who a developer is. I think you'd be surprised. I really don't know what a developer looks like. It's a like. reminder. It's a developer event. Let us do amazing oh, things. Developers have many faces. <laughs> You can talk about a project, you can articulate it rationally, but you cannot communicate architectural ideas without a drawing. I use an app called Paper by 53. It really provides a sense of freedom, a sense of being emancipated from technology. It allows you to communicate as if directly from your heart, from your soul. It's just part of you. And I think that, that magic is part of the app world. Live coverage now from Moscone West at San Francisco as we begin Apple's WWDC 2014. Airbnb saved my life. I talked to my friends. Instagram, Tumblr. Like, blah, 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 blah. Evernote. That's the one. I'm addicted to Pinterest because it is amazing. There's so much entertainment. It's all mobile, by the way. Mm -hmm. it's, it's limitless what you can do. Like, Dive. Jump off a boat. <laughs> it's not waterproof, however. <laughs> Do not bring your iPad off the, the boat. The health of the ocean is absolutely essential to the health of us as human beings. Pangea runs a sailing expedition now bring vessel you to help beautiful scientists young people collect data doing amazing all around things. the world. Buy an iPad and you too can sail the world. That I use every day. iNavX is essential for us to be able to navigate. Will you see a Mac Pro in any of this video? Allows you to Will enter you even the see a laptop in this video? <laughs> into a global database so we can start to build up a bigger picture of this problem around the world. I think these apps are essential for us to be able to bring change to what's going on in the ocean. Best app of all time has to be Tinder. I'm most probably like the Tinder. millions of people that's got sucked into to Candy Crush. Robot Unicorn Attack 2. Crazy. Uh, he looks like a grinder guy to me. To meet new people in London. <laughs> Yeah. Words, friends, Scrabble. I play solitaire. And of course I always win. Solitaire. Of course I always oh, win. Oh, it's the old I'm guy the joke. Guy stores of, of dreams and hope for, for hitters. They come in and... Remember that a lot of what WWDC is is to inspire developers, to get them to develop for these platforms, to yep. get them to write great stuff. So this ad is not for us. This is for developers. I'm able to break down the swing into parts so that you can see, okay, here's the mistake and here's the adjustment that I need to make. So what you have is a kid that can not only do it right, but then you can train him on doing it over and over and over. Now they're able to look and say, you know what, I'm getting better. And that's one of the things that you need for life in general, but in sports, you want hope. And so now it's easy for them to focus on dreaming. Or Candy Crush. <laughs> we need like a silence finder app. I gravitate toward very uh, melancholy and painful songs. For example. This has become as essential as my guitar. There are apps that help people. All these people like in a really narrow alley. Lives. That's where they're going to be selling these things. <laughs> the future of developers. This is interesting. Look at this. This is a 3D. Uh, wow. Printed. And it is aesthetic. like magic. It really is. In combination with the hand, the app has allowed me to gain functionality That's and independence. Yeah. Look at that. I, I enjoy being known as the kid with a bionic arm. You know, it's something interesting, it's something different, and I'm, I'm a big fan of being different. This is essentially an extended version of the iPad ad. That, yeah, uh, Apple, not it's iPhone really iPad. long. It's being born. Gray's late again. Yeah, right, the <laughs> stalling. It's the chronic. You see the world in a different way, and I think an app can do that because it really does open something you didn't know beforehand. Developers are doing extraordinary things. I can't believe what they're creating today. It's genius. If I met the person that made Sky Go, I'd probably give him a massive hug. You inspire me so much. They make our lives better, and they think of things that obviously regular people can't think of. I don't know how the technology works. It's just magic. It's really interesting use of the background. Yeah. They're, they're all, all the same. They're all, all so these, they're all converging, deep, so it's all vanishing points right yeah, behind them. Yeah, yeah. The one guy in a storage unit is a little odd. Yeah. <laughs> that was the Tinder guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Tim Cook taking the stage now to great applause. Now we're going to hear how many apps they downloaded and how many 
iPhones this Good morning. week. Good morning. It's always exciting. Good morning. Welcome to San Francisco. We're here today and all week to celebrate the developer community and all of the amazing apps that they've created. I hope that video did a great job of capturing just how deeply we feel about our developer community and more importantly, the a number of lives that they've enriched. So from all of Apple. He's running his own uh, presentation. He's got a pickle. <laughs> Steve never did that. Do you, want to, do you want to define what you just said? I think he's holding his hand in production. That's called a pickle. It's a next slide next. It's, it's yeah, a Steve very, would never do that. very high Never use version. a flicker. It's a yeah. very high end version of it. Yeah. We have a bunch of them. Steve had people he could fire. Yeah. Rather, rather he rather would pickle. <clears throat> change screens by glaring at someone. Yes. yes. No, it was all coordinated. Well, it was heavily rehearsed. That's why yeah. Steve would rehearse for weeks before. I don't know if Tim has the time to do that. Now, WWE I can say how much I hate this barn door thing. It's a huge conference for Apple and a huge conference for all of our developers. <laughs> we have over a thousand of our best and brightest engineers here today to talk with you directly in labs about how to improve your code. We've got people from more countries than ever before. And two thirds of the attendees today are here at a developers conference for the very first time. In other words, lots of people weren't invited back. <laughs> a special shout out this morning to the student scholarship winners. They worked really Typically, Apple loads the first few rows with Apple employees, right. members of the board. You'll probably see Al Gore there and so forth. Uh, but there are many more rows behind them. <laughs> Most many, of the many. journalists uh, at least try not to clap and <laughs> sit on their hands. They're not there to applaud but to learn. And then there's the developers who probably do. The developer community is incredibly vibrant. We now have 9 million registered developers. That's up almost 50% since last year. Did he double-click the pickle? Developers we've ever <laughs> yeah, I think he did. I think he double-clicked the pickle. <sighs> That's why we don't want nothing you to have worse pickle, than, Tim. Nothing worse than double-clicking the pickle. OS 10 and iOS. And you are going to see some great new features for both. There and you some go. great updates. But even more importantly, you're going to see how they've been engineered to work seamlessly together. Now, you're also going to see the mother of all releases for developers. It's a huge release, and it's so huge this is that we've dedicated an entire section of the presentation what could this be? just for this. This must be the home. Hmm. This is a third thing. He's got three. Visual programming. Yeah, it could be a new uh, that would be huge. IDE. With OS 10 and the Mac, we're shipping the best Macs in our history. If you look just in this last fiscal year, yeah, they did. Uh, the industry um, declined by five percent. Like node-based programming, yeah, like Quartz. Mm -hmm. People are moving away from MVC as well, and that's a very much of an MVC huge. development. Xcode is. Be interesting to see what that million, dev portion is. We're, really We're going to start with OS 10. Up. And I'm glad to see some love for the Mac release here. The of OS X Mavericks has done really great. It had great features for power users, like power tabs and tags and enhanced support for multiple displays, advanced technologies for longer battery life and greater performance, and of course, new and improved apps. Just since its release in October, we've installed over 40 million copies of Mavericks. This is the most of a single release ever in Apple Apple's history. Apple's always been really good at getting people to move also, to the next version. Of course, giving it away helps. Giving it away helps. Make it easy to install. Yeah. Of our install base Look at that. Working on our latest operating system. This it's is actually the much better in iOS. It's almost 90%. Ever yeah. Of any PC operating system. In Makes it much easier to develop. Right. Yep. Now, you may wonder how that compares to Windows. <laughs> I knew somebody was going to ask, so I decided to make a chart. <laughs> well, as it turns out, Windows 8 shipped about a year before Mavericks 
and it's at 14%. Yeah, Windows 8, not exactly a success story. <laughs> oh, Tim. Rubbing Need salt in the wound. I guess Bill Gates will not be making an appearance at this stuff. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> We've got $100 million for you. No. I feel like they'd make him do this, though, so he seems more human. It's good. It's kind of a weird keynoter. He should. No, he should. He yeah. should tell a few jokes. I think that's good. It humanizes. But, of course, we're always future-focused. Did you see that Laureen Powell bid for the Clippers but lost to Steve Ballmer? No. Yes. Oh, no. Really? Yeah. Yes. Two billion. Steve Jobs' widow. Everybody wants the Clippers that bad. Nothing like buying a losing team. Good morning. Ah, here we go. Wow. Craig Federighi, the guy with the good hair. It's like Chris Green. He's... Wonderful to be here presenting He's the OS 10 guy. Greatest course. developers collected in the world. You guys are fantastic. You know, it was just a year ago here at WWDC when we narrowly averted a major OS 10 naming crisis. <laughs> They'd run out of big cats. You may remember <laughs> that we were able to deftly shift from names based on big cats to names based on beautiful places in California. Craig is of course, Apple's senior vice president of software average. engineering, and well, here's where we find out where the year, new landmark will be. I'm predicting name. Yosemite. And so yeah, I think you're right. Our crack Not Half Dome. Team, <laughs> them in their VW yeah, you can see the press half ass. The now, they first ventured south, oh, discovering funny. OS X Oxnard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is good. You got to do humor for this. Fun. This is fun. It's yeah, not I funny like it. to the people of Oxnard. No. Rancho Cucamonga. Oh dear! <laughs> Don't make fun of names now. Come Still, on. We had Fresno. Hit the mark. So they boldly Fresno's the ventured butt of north. Many a joke. Landing yep. at OS 10. Weed. weed. <laughs> yep. At least they didn't say humble. It's where College yeah. of the Siskiyous is. It is actually called Weed. The uh, oh, there is a there is there a, is a weed. Yeah, I think yeah. that's for the local industry. Yeah. <laughs> within the product marketing organization. And uh, they're. Uh, your book is called The Backwash. I'm not kidding. Oh my <laughs> and what then was a somewhat more yeah, here we go. Path. Going to Yosemite. There we go. Ultimately to a place that embodies the beauty and power I think that's an OS excellent name. We discovered OS 10 Yosemite. Oh, yeah. There we go. Wow. They're going to use Yosemite Sam as the logo. That is yeah. El Capitan, <laughs> a very famous uh, rock for climbers. Very difficult climb on that front face. Fantastic new release with a new interface. New interface. Big enhancements to our most popular. It also has a steep Looks more like curve. iOS. We call continuity. All right, here's now a thing. Start what is design. continuity? OS I'm betting continuity means it looks more like iOS. This is Johnny Ives, uh, of course, input. And yep. over the Flatter, years, I would expect. It's evolved to the refined look we all love today. No more skeuomorphism. Well, with Yosemite. We continue this evolution, and I'd like to give you a look at where we're headed. Here we go. We see, saw some leaked screenshots earlier of this, and it was much flatter. And we'll say, any company looking at doing presentations, th these are they some of the best. Like, if you're going to design a presentation yeah, between between Apple and yeah. Salesforce, those are the two, like, in my opinion, some of the best. Yeah. yeah. Flat. Yeah, drop shadows, kind of a little bit still. Try not to scare anybody. Th those are really flat. Glad they fixed the assistant preference logo. That was never one of my favorites. I think a lot of people are going to look at this and say, what? I don't get it. A designer would see Looks the difference, just right? Just like iOS. Does look like iOS. There's the flattened calendar it's a that was pastelli. People hated in iOS seven. Yeah, it has the iOS seven palette, perhaps. I think the team has done some remarkable work. You know, we started distracted by his awesome hair. Does, does he look like a Disney well, like oh, prince of some yeah. kind or something? <laughs> it's the second button open that's distracting me. The toolbars. And the window material. And my the window shirt. construction. <laughs> we should all do that. And yeah, if you look at the window title the bar, colors. you'll see how the use of translucent materials. <laughs> do you have a blow dryer in your office? <laughs> Chris Breen is the uh, inspiration, by the way, for that hairstyle. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Craig has said this many times. So now your windows take on the personality of your desktop. 
As you change your desktop picture, your window adapts to reflect that personality and that temperature. No, I'm not seeing it. And that translucency also helps maintain a sense of depth and oh, there's place as you move your understand. windows I... over one another. This was, of course, very controversial now, a couple of versions ago when they put a translucent menu picture. bar in. Yeah. I see the dock is slightly translucent. Beautifully crafted new icon. Yeah, and all so the 3D stuff is gone. So fundamentally still it's the flat gray bar Check instead of just that free floating. Yeah. Yeah. That is a gorgeous. And, and the reflection, is that for the presentation or is that in the OS? That's, that's the uh, slide, I believe. No, it looks like it's... Well, there's probably a little reflection below the dock, and then there's a big fake that reflection That would be a lot of waste of space if they did that. Yes. <clears throat> no, yeah, you see the barn door has the... Yeah. ...and clear type. Now we know... For our pro users, often they really want to focus on the center of the screen and not be distracted by bright menus and bright docks. Yes. So we also introduced a dark mode. 50% gray mode. <laughs> wow. I like that, I was actually. in applause for dark yeah. mode. Lovers of dark. Photographer, photographers yeah. like that. Embrace right? the dark yeah. side. Yeah. It's great. Lightroom has that. Too. Through to the applications. Yeah. You notice here with calendar, this construction with a common toolbar and title bar area that makes the window both more distinctly recognizable. I would love a dark mode there too. The space Can they have like content. torn paper? And we carry this cool. over throughout Boy, the system to apps. This like was one of the distinguishing features between Windows and Macintosh was the lack of a menu like on the window. The right. yeah. And uh, I wonder if you're starting to see a migration look of controls from the menu time, bar at the top of the screen contact, to the window. This is something Apple always said, no, no, this is the right way to do it. They come mm -hmm. together for a gorgeous and more Very iOS. version of OS X, the That's best ever. Still saying OS 11 is iOS. I never no understood why they always say this is the best ever. Imagine if it was worse. Yeah. I mean, it was like, right. it's always we took three ever. steps back. It's, it's natural. It's okay. Center on OS X, of course, adopts the dark, translucent material, and precise type of Yosemite. It also now, most importantly, has a new today view. So you get an at a glance look. Yeah, that's iOS. Those. That's straight out of iOS 7. Your reminders, yeah. Are they the saying weather, that the color palette of the menus is adopting the desktop you can color palette? What are the they saying? Yeah, yes. Of today I don't view, really get it, though. The contents of widgets and apps that you've downloaded. I think from he's the apps talking about that picture of Yosemite right specifically. Set up the today view that you want for at a glance access to information. And that. Andy is says it's a new system font. Next up, Spotlight. So Spotlight has always been a super fast way to launch applications and find content local on your Mac. And Yosemite it is a great new interface. So when you click on the magnifying glass of the toolbar, you get a would have been funny right in the middle of the display. If they had named it OS X Compton in honor of Dr. Dre. I know. Be so great. OS X <laughs> straight out of Compton. Why don't they represent? <laughs> Made my lifetime. Wouldn't it have been great? Mm-hmm. Missed screen. opportunity. Really awesome. Now, in addition to these sources local to your Mac, we also tap into sources of information on the internet. So, for instance, type a few characters in, like Yosemite. You can get Microsoft did this in Windows 8 with Bing, Wikipedia, and, and got some criticism. I think people have gotten used to it. It's a nice thing to like search to globally. I'd like to a quick demo of the new UI in Yosemite now. All right, so here's our first look at Yosemite Live. So we see our beautiful new... Rafe Needleman tweets, Aw, oh, damn, Spotlight now looks like Alfred. <laughs> another another app, Sherlock. I'm going to start here with maps, and I want you to observe that as I scroll the content of the map, the way that the title bar actually reacts, its translucency and color to the content beneath. It's just really gorgeous. Very subtle, but yeah. Another app. So when you scroll over Golden Gate Park, it turns a little green. Is that good? <laughs> you know, if you're looking at something complex like a map, do you want to see something a lot of translucency? Like pretty... oh, yeah, there you go. You can see El Capitan through my appointments, but, but mildly. Apparently the trash can one of the, is a little more ghostly as well. Look at that. Yeah, a little translucent. I think this is one of the things that Apple invested in a long time ago, which was using the GPU heavily for the operating system, which is why they exactly. control the GPU. Exactly. That's why they won't let everyone write drivers for them, is because it is part of the OS. Now, what it allows them to do is do a lot of these things that are very hard to do in other operating systems because they're CPU based and not they're not they're not betting on a on a powerful GPU. So of course I have my notifications here, but I also have today view so I can see my calendar at a glance. 
my weather. These are interactive. It's interesting. This makes sense on mobile. I'm not sure how much it makes sense on a desktop. with stocks, for instance. I have a desktop app that I think it's called Blotter, I believe, that sits over top of the whole background, which really helps me not miss meetings. Yeah, a lot of people use Blotter, yeah. These widgets as well. Just click the edit just button. Put your down calendar here basically on the, on the desktop. Yeah. Right Not good if you're meeting with lots of people. And apps, like, why are you meeting with my competitor? Widgets. So I'm just going to drag out calculator, add that in here, just like that. Oh, that's nice. It's like the new widgets. Widget. Let's drag one of those in. So this is like what used to be a separate window, right you know, the widgets that we would swing to. Right. Which never worked very well. So this makes more sense. I got really excited about it for a while and spent a couple weeks or months working on it. And then I just gave up. And I was like, that's too hard to get to. Yeah. So this makes more sense. Click here on the I wonder if it's still glass. based on Dash. Got a search field right in the middle of the Look at that. That's basically Quicksilver or Alfred. Right. There it is. It's that easy. So it's putting spotlight in the center of the screen instead of the upper right hand corner hmm. where it's less used. I use it all the time. This is, this is time. absolutely. That's how I launch every, everything. Yeah. This is <laughs> the Sherlocking of Alfred and, and uh, Quicksilver. Matches on mail from Phil. Now, Phil and I are planning a camping trip. He's a bit of a gear nut. It's actually has something yeah, nicely done because you have a quick look preview. We also yeah. Have yeah. Reminders. So we have here that uh, our uh, meeting at the campsite, and uh, oh good, knife. I see that uh, Jeff and Johnny are both in Maps. on the trip as well. So it appears that the Yosemite uh, Notification you, you cent Center replaces Dashboard. Interesting. Which is a good idea, if that's in fact what's going yeah, on. Yeah, Dashboard was, a, I think, pretty underutilized. Really make the I, I know I didn't use it. I don't know anybody who did. No. So I'm working on a, uh, a document as well to help uh, plan our trip. Now, there are a lot of ways, of course, to find documents, but one way now is by app. So this is a numbers document. I type numbers. Boy, this you've is seen a straight out of Quicksilver. Spotlight can do math. Documents yeah. that I've opened with that app. Can I it? I can access them yeah. right here. So let's open up right my hiking the... trip. Uh, and here we see that uh, the trip is planned to involve a 16.4 mile uh, hike. And, you know, this is good. This is what Spotlight should have been. Uh, now, the question yes. is, do you integrate Siri into this as well? Bear, bear, bear I like right? the bear. <laughs> waving yeah. bear. Always, do you always, do you bear you always get that? Is that <laughs> like awesome. anytime you type half dumb, you get a waving bear? <laughs> it's a picnic basket. Hey, guys. Hello. <laughs> they believe in the Second Amendment. Bear arms, the right to keep and bear hey, boo -boo. arms. Boo-boo. Yeah. He believes in it. Oh, I think it's Jellystone Park, not Yosemite. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. I apologize. Looking for picnic Wrong baskets. Bear. For my document, I can also do great searches. Bear's giving you a high five. Yeah. But uh, this, they're actually using Spotlight to compete against Google and the Google That's knowledge. Right. That's exactly right. There's already Chrome now. You can talk to Chrome in the, on Macintosh. Yeah. And I'm really interested to see what they do with Siri here. And I, I suspect we're going to see a voice demo. I hope so. Without even launching an app, I can just do a look up for sushi, for instance. And we see I have maps results. Yeah, this is nice. I like this. I, I want this. Good. Yeah. Makes and, a lot and of the, sense. And the thing that, the, that we've seen is regardless of whether it's as good as Google, if it's more convenient, people just kind of go to it anyway. It's in the that's OS. What, that's what happened with, difference, yeah. with uh, Apple Maps is that it may not be as effective, but it's... Uh, and you see, I have... Uh, show times for the, uh, oh, yeah. Why well, use the browser when you can get show times right from the OS? Right. Now, my question is, what's the back end for this? Right. Google probably, but I don't know. I can't know. Bing. Well, what else is it? Is Apple creating a search engine? It's got to be Bing. I mean, it's... You think it's Bing? It's not Google. Is it... That's interesting. Apple's got the money. I mean, they could yeah. do their own search. Well, that's a lot. So mm -hmm. next, that's a lot to implement. They've got to be... Drive. He didn't say. Now... Okay. Intriguing. Intriguing. So, Google's got to drive, so do we. I'm intriguing myself. Provided, uh, provides a really convenient way for Dude, working with an app that works across all platforms, working on that same document. But now, with this iCloud is, Drive... This is, of course, something Apple's been trying for some time and, and done such a poor job with. <laughs> Developers are very skeptical, too, because, of course, uh, Cloud Sync for apps has, has always been broken. Right. You can get Only Apple was able to do it with iOS. Yeah. So He's got to convince developers on this better, one. You can store all of your own files of any sort and organize them however you wish. Yeah, that was the promise of iCloud that was not delivered on. Synchronized automatically across all your Macs. Now, they always announce these things that other people have had for a long time as if they invented it. I mean, well, this is Google Drive. Apple's really had a hard time with this. Uh, yeah. These cloud services. Also yep. accessible from your iOS devices via the iCloud Document Picker right in app. And what the heck? We're throwing in Windows too. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, Mail. So Mail. Ugh. Yosemite <laughs> has Hate Mail. 
It actually has a search that works. Let's wait and see if they well, we fixed really it. Focused on the basics, reliable. <laughs> Getting it to work. <laughs> fast switching between mailboxes, quick fetches of your new mail. It's really not Apple's fault. Gmail is but in addition not to a that, standard implementation. We want yeah. to address a fundamental problem with email, which is these days we so often want to send large attachments, whether it's videos or large. Ah, sets here's of photos, iCloud Drive. And we end up hitting one of these. A message saying that our recipient's mail server can't take those large attachments. That's a well, really nice error problem message problem to highlight. Yeah. It's just mail garbage. <laughs> with mail drop, instead of your message bouncing off your recipient's mail server. Okay, so share file, Dropbox, and Google Drive now all right. Sherlock. iCloud separate from the message, and it rendezvous on the receiving end. Now, do they have to use mail on the receiving end? Has a Mac, they get it just if like they have before. A Mac. And if they have another client, they get a link to securely download right, those. There you go. And limit is five gigabytes. Five that's gigs that's not unusual. Size. That's a pretty yeah. big file. Share file limits, I think, are four. The problem is OSs on the other end often can't handle more than four. Yeah. So yeah. that's great, actually. Five's I mean, a there's lot. a lot of big, like being able to send shows that we record yeah, to, you, to a client. You want to keep people yeah. from sending 164 mm -hmm. gigabyte files. On an yeah. email message, and you realize that if you could just maybe circle something or write something on the message, maybe do a little something, you could get your point across so uh, much more clearly. Okay. We should make well, a list of Mark companies being Sherlocked here. Right back <laughs> in to your mail message. And it even works with PDFs. So if you need to, for instance, sign a PDF, you can now do that with your eyesight camera or even drawing your signature right on the trackpad. I actually do that with preview right now. The email message and you can send it on its way. It's going to be super handy. Next. Great. I love it. Mark, I love it. Next up, Safari. We I like that they're moving through these very quickly. Yeah, this is good. The well, they have a lot to Safari say today. Mm -hmm. Into this single bar. And that means you have more space for your content. Now, more of course, penguins. you may wonder, what happened to my favorites bar? Well, of course, you can bring that back if you want to. But in Yosemite, you don't really need to. Because now, your smart search field, when you click it, shows you all of your favorites right there. And it's also really great for search. So in addition, when you type to get in your smart search suggestions, you also get spotlight suggestions Ooh. right there in your completion menu. And this means you can get at things faster Notice than it said ever Google before. search, but I wonder... Now, Safari's also more powerful than ever. This is a, also what uh, mm -hmm. so Microsoft now, did when they was a... subscribe to an RSS feed on a site, you can do that right here. <laughs> what? And the RSS? RSS feed articles will show up right in your Who? Safari sidebar under shared links. Huh. And you can also share... They're bringing the back the feed reader to Safari. Network. Which was Safari awesome. With that was there. And with just one click, you can share a web page. Now, Safari is better than ever as well. It's a very interesting tab. choice to bring we back RSS. I'm thrilled about it, but... Bird's eye glance. It used to be the way I got everything. It was yeah. just, you know... Yeah. Sites just like this, so you get individual stacks for each site that you're browsing. Safari is also great when it comes to privacy. Safari was the first browser to introduce private browsing. This is their and strongest pitch here. Can create a new private see if window. I mentioned do not track. When you do, all the content within that window and all its tabs stay private, and all of your other windows are unaffected. It's really yeah, handy. private browsing in a tab. Now, Safari hmm. is great when it comes to standards. It has WebGL now for super fast 3D graphics. Premium video, aka DRM video at the bottom. And there. HTML premium video. Support Google Speedy, now, which is good. This enables modern Macs to efficiently stream video from sites like Netflix yeah, without that's a plug-in. That was the controversial the awesome. choice that Mozilla made to support to that DRM. Right. Safari is doing the same. On a MacBook Air streaming Netflix, and that's for 1080p video. Now, Safari has been uh, set the benchmark, really, for energy efficiency since Maverick. That's interesting. And its lead here continues. Better battery life when, when you watch with Safari. Well, I'll tell you, Firefox is a pig. Yeah. Like, you know, you'd open up Firefox and you'd be guaranteed you're just going to burn your... Uh, and they're showing uh, graphs here showing how Safari does. Yeah. Not only uh, beat him in battery life, but beats Firefox and Chrome in performance. It's like last night's episode of Silicon Valley. <laughs> they got a uh, Weissman score of five, ladies and gentlemen. Five. I couldn't watch five, too. <laughs> After Game of Thrones, I couldn't even watch TV. I, know. I, I, I literally had to. I just, couldn't eat breakfast. I just, I just had to walk away. Yeah, uh, just get in a fetal position. No spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> I opened Twitter last night, and all I saw was Game of Thrones. Oh my God! And I said, "No, that's it. 
Yeah. Got to watch. Brian Kroll to the stage. Let's give him a big welcome. Brian Kroll. Orion Kroll taking the stage now. Thanks, Craig. I'm really happy to be here today. Um, so I'm just going to dive right into Safari. Okay. Something we've never yeah. seen before. That's why he's so happy it's to be here. Really yeah. great. <clears throat> and when you go to a website, don't know who he you is. Really appreciate the new design. But I'm figuring he's with the simpler, Safari team. It's even more powerful. I can open up the sidebar really easily to get at my bookmarks, my reading list, as well as my um, shared links. And when I click into the Brian Kroll Center, is VP thrilled. of Software Marketing. Okay. Instant access and to all my favorite kind stuff. of a maverick. It's really He's nice. tucked in his shirt. So I'm going to go ahead yeah. and type in Bold a move. for Ansel Adams. There we go. And if I hit return, Bold choice with the button down. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Caller. But. He it's also looks Adams. pretty much like a younger Steve Ballmer. Term. And then yeah. get this new spotlight suggestion there at the top. So this is a guy we don't talk about a lot on Mac Break Weekly, but he is uh, or if I like, I can go ahead and see the entire important. article right on the Wikipedia site. I like that they're they're including it's a lot of people. Convenient. I mean it's yeah, they should. a great way to spread it. Now out. if you use tabs, he's VP software marketing. You're love this. Um, now no matter how many tabs I and in have open, fact, would be the guy who might have done a, a Apple search engine. It's really uh, given his background. I love that actually because I'm an over tabber. Yeah. So I can go ahead and do this, and I'll click. As are most geeks. I mean, I think yeah. that that's a that's a, a feature that hardcore geeks really will appreciate. I have like tab closing anxiety. Yeah. yeah. Steve Gibson. Two, Mike Elgin, two. I don't, I'm not a big tab guy. I don't like tabs. Yeah. yeah. But, I'll, but I think I hear that all the time. That the only time I have lots of tabs over when I'm prepping for the show and I right. open up all the articles right. and I just go through them one at a time. But that's the only time I... Other than, well, I never have more than three or four after that. I have a lot of automated sets of websites that I open up to, I think, 35 or something like that. Right. Once I just click a button, they all open. Right. And then I'm in trouble. This is for people like you. Yeah. Yeah. They shouldn't encor encourage me. <laughs> I'm ready to send I need help. So very easy to get uh, images from, so steal images from the website and put them in email. Yes. <laughs> very handy. My two cents to this. So I can go here and we have just the right feature called markup. Now with markup. Boy, it'd be nice if it I were actually marked down. Image without ever even leaving mail. It's sketch. It's what I want him to do is so say, and now you can just draw on your screen to do this. <laughs> touch screen. Oh my God. So great. So touch screen on this would be insane. So as you move it around, you can see that it magnifies everything underneath it. Wow, this is interesting. Right here. Again, this is GPU technology. Out. Yeah, and someone did point out, I mean, a lot of the OSs are, use GPU now, um, mm -hmm. but, but Apple got into it much earlier and it's much more, it's much more deeply embedded into the system. Than, than the other options. Although some, many of their machines, especially the laptops, have fairly anemic GPUs. They're still pretty, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, they're pretty powerful from what they used to be. They're good enough. A lot better than a lot of PCs. Yeah. There we go. See, if you could just do this. Oh, did you just see what happened? To recognize the arrow and make it really pretty. Oh. It curved the arrow? No, it made a, it made a, it made a, like an illustrator arrow at, with a, he right. did a hand-drawn one and then it just, it just changed it. But Isn't that sort of like what Skitch does? Like magic. There we go. I know. I'm so saying now this is the really Skitch has been um, so Skitched. It's been Sherlock. Um, create a cartoon mm. bubble. Okay. Not so good at drawing. So but it's going to turn this into a. There we Ooh. Go. <laughs> Mac Draw is back, baby. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mac Draw, how we missed you. <laughs> Just imagine we'll do that with your finger, finger, finger on the screen. You know that's in your dreams, Lindsay. Is Wait for it. Multi this is called markup. Yeah. <laughs> and again, this is happening in the mail. Okay. So right. I think I've Which pres I picture. presume it means it's OS wide. Uh, Maybe not. Time to go. <laughs> so um, now it's ready for me to mail, and I can just click like that. So that's how easy it is. Napkin gets Sherlock, according to... Yeah, Napkin is a standalone app, Mac app that, uh, for this purpose. Yeah. But it only does it within Napkin. I mean, having it OS-wide is fabulous. Yeah. How about that parallel programming joke? You did not see that coming. <laughs> Next! <laughs> Drew Olinoff says that's a dad joke. Something entirely different. <laughs> I hope the rope continuity. is multi threaded. So now at Apple, we believe you should be able to use the right device. You know, for the Craig Federighi has Maybe only been on Twitter since November. On 
A lot of executives say they bloomers. chew Twitter because it's their, yeah. you know, their companies don't want them to say anything. But we also want the transitions between these moments to be absolutely as natural and seamless this as possible. This is critical because, of course, now, AirDrop has never worked cross-platform. And that's AirDrop because now if they AirDrop can get AirDrop to work cross-platform, uh -huh. so Renee Ritchie pointed out that despite the name, AirDrop for iOS and AirDrop for Mac were two different technologies that were mutually incompatible. They finally <laughs> fixed this. Renee said but this will happen in ten times. Really this is continuity, I guess. Handoff. So it turns out now that when you're working on your Mac, your devices around you in proximity are aware of each other and are aware of what you're up to. This and so if you want to pick up where you left off on your Mac, on this your iPad, using well, your iPad bonjour. is prompting you mm -hmm. right in the lower left of the screen. Just swipe up. Oh, I love that. Pick up working on what you're working this on is a Mac smart move. If you own an ecosystem, make sure the ecosystem is works. <laughs> yeah. complete. Well, and with our system, that means that because we use Meraki as the back end, because we could do this anywhere in the world because of the mesh. Because they're all they're all considered they're all, they're all the considered same the same network. Yeah. That's great. Wouldn't that be Mac. nice? Yeah. Well, your Mac will notice what you're doing and prompt you right on the dock. You click it and you can pick up finishing that message right on your Mac. I see you're writing a message. Would you like some help? <laughs> now, we've been able to take this same proximity awareness and make the process of creating a hotspot easier than ever before. So wow. now, if you're using your Mac and you're away from a network, but your phone is nearby, when you go up to your Wi-Fi menu, your Mac actually without any configuration ever having been done on your phone, sees your phone yeah. and prompts you. Maybe that's Beacon. If you click it, that it beacon? automatically sets up a hotspot. You never type a mm. password. And wow. You're the network that Man, that's, oh, that's cool. great. Oh. You know, it's, it, this is the kind of thing Apple should double down on. This yes. is how you get people to buy iPads and iPhones. That's right. And Macs, for that matter. It there. makes it really uncomfortable to have an Android phone right. in, in this ecosystem. Now, right. Yeah. The next area we really wanted to handle was SMS. Yeah, you got to fix now, this. <laughs> Let's hear it. <laughs> yeah, tell us about I'd SMS. love to have device. that work. Unless you're on an Android then device. Then green bubble In which case, forget about it. You'll yeah. never yeah. see your messages again. Oh, you know, he is going. They're going to move messages to, and they to Android. On sending us messages, and we don't want to hold it against them. But the problem is <laughs> that those messages don't show up on our other devices until now. Because now... Mm. Your phone is able to act as a relay to automatically and transparently send your messages between devices. Now, believe it or not, we're able to do the same thing with phone calls. So uh, now, this is a feature I've had for some time with Android, call, but uh, your Mac gives you. It's actually kind of annoying. My Mac rings every time my phone rings. And use your Mac as a <laughs> yeah. Phone. Really? Yeah. Huh. You can do that with Google Voice. Yeah, I've been for yeah. two years or yeah. three years. It's very annoying. Yes. <laughs> when I get a call on one phone, eight phones ring and my Mac. With I have that with hangouts, with hangouts. When someone sends yeah. me a message, there's like, yeah. it just like, yeah. Bloop, bloop, yeah. all over my house. However, convenient. Yes. And, and the laptop rings for me like 10 seconds before my phone right. rings. Right. And they pick up one that continues to ring with some yeah. so issues. Contacts and you want to dial a number, you can do it right there. And even on a web page, you see a number you want to call? You can call it right from your Mac. So I want to give you... Again, possible on Google for well, a long time. And a real, a real advantage big, of Google Voice, frankly. Yeah. The big thing is, is that Apple doesn't really... A lot of times we think of them as innovators, and they, are, they do innovate in areas, but a lot of places what they do is they just take what everybody else is doing and they make it work inside of an ecosystem where it's controlled. Right. Yeah. It's and changed, it works well. It's changed, though, having started the show out with very mobile-heavy... Uh, you know, the, the the commercial, it does give us more of a reason to use OS X. Sure. Mm -hmm. Because right now, I pull sure. for my phone every time I want to do anything. And, and vice versa. It makes you want to use a phone and an iPad. It's a, it, yeah. Continuity means stay in our ecosystem, please. Right. Does anyone want to go? And, you know, and don't take things all apart. You need it all. Right. But you can see how if someone just got into this, they would, they'd buy an Android and they'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm now off. You know, never, never. And uh, as our, uh, as hungry, uh, so, Missed in our chat room points out this is global as opposed to right. Google Voice, which is U.S. only. Yeah, now, that's a good. Point. I presume this is global. I see no reason why it wouldn't be. Andreas is up for uh, some karaoke, 
And he sent me a, uh, a URL that's to a, a good place to go for karaoke. So this is pretty typical of the tech industry. Now, Incredible to innovation to used to maybe pick up my iPad. for you notice as I look at pathetic, my iPad, let's put that <laughs> minor convenience. Minor yeah. convenience. <laughs> incredible, but incredible it pays for the inventions. infrastructure for people to be yeah, important. I know. Like it's all what the, the really trivial pays do. for the important stuff. Well, I understand. Well, it doesn't have any money. What, what Alex was saying about it, the lengths they went so that you could see a picture of Yosemite uh, right. through your menu. I mean, that's yeah. Yeah. Phone calling. Uh, hold on one sec. Uh, well, this is from my mom. Now, she, she is surely wants to grill me about the newest fourth tier LLVM compiler. I hope it's Gam Gam. Safari. Uh, Maybe it's Robin Williams. Come on. No, Craig, we want to talk to your mom. I'm sorry. She's a wonderful, wonderful woman. But uh, <laughs> this, is, this is my. She's missed an opportunity. Uh, to have Robin know, Williams and Mrs. Doubtfire would have been great. So, but you know, I would like to show you how we can make phone How we calls. can automate hanging up on your mother. I wonder if his mom actually just called during the event. Maybe it was his mom. <laughs> God. And uh, uh, hit it just like this. And you notice I get an uh, option to call right here inside of Safari. Nice. But, you know, Very I nice. I wanted to make a phone call to uh, a new Apple employee. Uh, that's, Remember, this that's is, us. is something we do for one of the features time. Apple sued Samsung over in right. court and lost the click to call on iOS. Oh, Dr. Dr. Dre makes an appearance. Didn't Call forget him. about Dre. What was that number? Did you get it? Let's, uh, let's have my Mac dial via my iPhone. Hey, Dre, yo. We recorded it. I, I, I screen captured it. Oh, Don't worry, I got it. was a 408 number. Let's all call him right means now. means it's Dr. Dre's office at Apple, which won't be occupied all that much. Right. Hello? <laughs> wow. Hey, uh, it's Craig Federer. I love the UI. Look at that. Hey, uh, doctor, you're, you're on speakerphone with, via my Mac. Doctor, you don't call him doctor. <laughs> hey, 50. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Nerdiest thing. <laughs> so that means we won't see him. He's probably, yeah, yeah, we'll see Jimmy. Some amazing apps. Uh, by the way, I'm glad you called. I hear Tim gets in pretty early. What time should I show up for work? <laughs> If you want to beat Tim into the office, it'd be about 4.30. But I think, uh, you know, uh, orientation, new employee orientation starts at 9. So, uh, and you don't want to miss the free t-shirt. So I'd shoot for 9. <laughs> Sounds good. I can't wait to get to work with the team at Apple. Well, Dre, it's been great chatting with you. Uh, I'll see you around campus. Thanks, Craig. Talk I'm seeing a All right, tweet bye. that Yosemite Spotlight uses Bing for web search. Interesting. What yeah, else is we there? We don't have a confirmation on that, but yeah. I'm not surprised. A beautiful new design. I bet you somewhere Apple is building a search engine in the back end. They've got 50 engineers sitting there just jamming away on it. Eventually, they'll roll out their own. I guess Dre doesn't use FaceTime. It's kind of sad. A new iCloud drive. He's been banned from appearing on videos for the next yeah, maybe 18 months. <laughs> Dre, uh, is Tyrese there? And of course... Continuity. Does this mean that Dr. Dre won't be the musical act at the end of the uh, uh, presentation? Yeah, maybe. Uh, good point. That, that could be why he's not on FaceTime. Yeah. I don't want to give away his I location. I think they should reunite NWA and I, I think uh, so. F the police. No, no, I guess they can't say that. Cool. Now, everyone else will get it in the fall. And, fall. believe it or not, it will be free. Developers get it today. Public in the fall. And free. We're doing something a little unusual. This Steve summer Jobs as well. called Dr. Dre three years ago at a similar keynote. Yeah, and the video was very embarrassing. Was if you saw it. Program. By the way, Dr. Dre's number is an Apple number. It is 408-974-1010. That's the main number right for now. Apple. Just in case you want to call. You call them right now. Oh, beta. Uh, He's talking about beta. Oh, preview. The They've done public that betas. Remember from 1093. I think you're gonna love it. I'm gonna hand it back to Tim. Thank you. It looks fun. I'll put one of my computers on. Oh, uh, immediately I'll I'll upgrade. As you know, I always do. I guess consistently give give Doctor Dre a call. There's any no. keynote. Yeah, four zero eight nine seven four ten ten. Call now. Everybody, everybody call right. Everybody call Doctor Dre. That's the main line of that. I know. About it. Don't forget about Dre. All right, here we go. iPhone. We've now iPad. sold well over eight hundred million Jeez. iOS devices. It's been a Christmas. And each of the categories of devices has set its own significant sales record in the past that is, year. That is astounding. It's the same number of credit cards they have on file. Literally. Uh oh. 
little pop up there. iPad is oh, is that a crash? Is that on our computer? Is that us? <laughs> That's us. <laughs> I'm not Isn't sure. It? It's, it's in that little player. I'm not quite sure. It's That's got to it's gotta be, be us. us. Yeah. It's a Java pop up. I don't know why we, we would want to upgrade Java. You know what, Oracle? Stop screwing with the keynote, okay? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Jeez. Larry Ellison is personally. But in there, that was us, by oh, the way. Uh, yeah, not, not Tim Cook. And 30 million customers who bought an iOS device in the past 12 months was buying their first Apple That's device. Good news for Apple. In other words, we're big in China. That's got to be third world growth. Now, many of these customers. But listen. We're switchers from Android. Interesting. I don't know if, what many means. They had millions bought an Android phone by mistake. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then they sought a better it. experience and a better life. <laughs> Actually, I love that. I, you want to see that, don't you? Decided to check uh -huh. out iPhone and iOS. Nearly, in fact, a little good-natured pokes at the competition is fine with me. Of our yeah. customers in China in the past six months switched from Android to iPhone. China, half. This is incredible. Yeah. Of their, of their purchases. The better iPhone, experience not in China. is our devices and iOS. And iOS 7 took that experience to an even higher level. The customer sat with iOS 7 is really off the charts. Change Wave recently measured it at 97%. These are customer sat ratings that no one gets. It's really annoying. He's getting really whispery. Now, yeah, his voice seems to be uh, cracking. Up. I have to say, though, uh, high marks all around for this mm -hmm. presentation so far. They, they didn't go on and on about retail. They, you yeah. know, they got right to the point. Yep. Well, we're not done yet. We'll see. Uh -huh. for for the OS this is a little bit of a yeah. trumpet blowing, but not... Again, you got to impress developers with the market size. What has happened with iOS 7, our latest release, almost 9 out of 10... Oh, let's we'll see if he does the same thing with Android again. They just did with Windows. Our latest operating system. Yeah. Because of the yeah. Android fragmentation is yeah. still a big problem. This is in stark contrast to <laughs> yeah. Here it comes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 9%. <laughs> if you look at their latest release, it's exactly the opposite. less than 1 out of 10 of their customers are on their latest software. And if you looked at a broader group, over a third of their customers are running a version of Android from four years ago. <gasps> four years ago. <laughs> oh, my <history. laughs> oh, my God. Now, that means that these customers are not getting great new features. I gotta, gotta tell you, Tim, those are They're not future not iPhone customers in most now. cases. Yeah. And they don't. I wonder if he's counting the forked Androids. He's counting all the, yeah. you know, and the and the developing nation Androids. And, and yeah. those aren't really Google's customers. Android, but it is a problem. It's a problem market. for developers. Yeah, it is. And here he goes with malware. No yeah. wonder experts are saying now, things like that's death. a very deceptive slide because yeah. the, mal the number of malware. Into a toxic yeah, see, that's not true. That's a not. That's Shout out for Adrian Kingsley Hughes. No. Yeah, this is toxic health stew. That's absolutely not the case. Wow, <laughs> sounds <laughs> really dramatic. Yeah. I'm gonna use it's that. It's like a bad place. Toxic right, Hills. <laughs> I want a picture of that. <laughs> Sounds like a menu item at Guy Ferreri's uh, yeah. new OS 10 month. Toxic Health Stew. <laughs> like, With iOS 7. Would you like a mole <laughs> or a cop? <laughs> <laughs> Today we're announcing iOS 8. The second of the triumvirate. Remember, we've got something unusual coming yeah. for developers at the end of this. iOS 8 is a giant release, and it's really two stories, not one. It has great end-user features, but it also has incredible developer features. So you can extend your experience and build apps that you couldn't do before. We'd like to get started with describing it we're talking about the end-user features. And to do that, I'd like to bring Craig back up to the stage. Craig? Apple's senior vice president for 
software, Craig Federighi. Why did he even yeah. leave? So, what? Let's talk about iOS 8. I think we're going to see a lot more of that toxic health stew. I think yeah. that's, that's, that's going to be the quote of the... Uh, yes. Anybody have toxichealthstew.com? I'm posing a tweet about how happy I am that they used that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Toxic health stew. What? Uh, toxichealthstew.com is available on Hover. It's my porn but name. What I really love are our new be a good interactive code name for the notifications. Next so now, if you get a message like this, just pull down... And you can reply from right where you are. Do you do that, uh, Sarah? What? You don't have to leave. That's not new, is it? The pull down to. You can respond message. to a message within the notification. Oh yeah. You do that? Yeah. yeah. On the lock screen. I ask you because I. You can I just swipe across on the lock screen. You get those action buttons, tap, and you've dealt with it oh, right there. They've got yeah, to fix. Yeah, for sure. They've now, got to fix that iOS problem. 7, you can't. You have to go through a huge number of notifications. At least I do all the time. Well, now one you by can one, also use that them. same double tap to get at the tap people you communicate with most frequently. It's really handy. And in iOS 7, we introduced this great tab view in Safari. Well, we're bringing a great tab view to iPad as well with this bird's eye view of all of your tabs. And Safari also picks up the sidebar that we love in Yosemite with access to your bookmarks, your reading list, and your shared links. Now, we've made managing your mail easier than ever before. So now, if you're reading a message and you want to remember to get back to it so you're going to mark it unread, we can do that with just a single gesture. And if you want to flag a message, you can just pull across as a flag option. But if you pull all the way across... So there goes mailbox. With just a gesture. <laughs> Again, they just go, yep. we would look at everybody else's stuff and take yep. it. What we've done with composing messages. Which makes the you lawsuits with, with uh, Samsung even more entertaining. Email. So ToxicHealthStew.com is taken, I know, but ToxicHealthStew.net is available. Who beat me to ToxicHealthStew.com? Unbelievable. I know, I saw .net, I was going to take it. Um, can't have calm. ToxicHealthStew.kitchen, you could embrace one of the new. <laughs> so I'd like to give you a demo of some of these great iOS... ToxicHealthStew.academy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just because Apple is replicating some features that are in an so app like Mailbox doesn't mean I'll switch off of Mailbox, screen. though. It doesn't really work that way. No, it just means people are less likely to switch like over to it. To right. I don't think you're going to pull people back. Right. And, and where is the the desktop version like of Mailbox that they promised, like, two months ago or something? Use the device. I mean, here, maybe By the way. Some Who? Dropbox did? Mailbox, yeah. They did. They, when they launched the, I think it was the Android version, they said, and coming up soon, the iOS desktop version. I, can just I mean the uh, OS 10. So God, Apple really yeah. likes the group best deal. Now I get access to my keyboard. The, the what? Type right there. Yeah, I just yeah. did. Now this works great for third party apps. Always using well. it. So for instance, uh, looks like I got tagged on Facebook. Probably because they, they released like that song right to be used in pre presentations. It's probably part of the deal. And sometimes you That's receive pretty, notifications pretty popular that you song. just really don't want to deal with right now. And you can just flick those away like that. That's really handy. That's like health through kitchen. That we've made awesome. getting at people easier than ever before. So if I just double tap my home button, see I have all the people I've most recently communicated with. People you've with, interacted with side, show up as avatars. I have access to all my favorites. If I tap on one, I have controls here to give them a phone call, mess, I message That's them, a nice interface. It is. FaceTime right here. Do you think Toxic Health Stew was on the bingo on the or uh, really sheet for this? Nobody could have predicted such, <laughs> no. such a magical term. <laughs> Let's go take a look at an iPad, actually. Big break for Andrew Kingsley. What's his name? Yeah, a note for, uh, a note for you journalists out there. You can get yeah. on the keynote if you <laughs> say something colorful something. with the language. Yeah. Especially about a competitor. Especially about Android or Windows. There's already a Toxic Health Stew Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> is actually called out right here on the top. Mail has actually given me an intelligent suggestion here to add it to my calendar. I can tap add, and just like this, it, lets, it prompts me to fill out and add an event to my calendar. That's really handy. Now, sometimes you get a message like this where you're gonna have to do some thinking about it, maybe get back to it later. Well, now with just a single swipe, I can mark it as unread. It's really cool. It would be really cool for it to be really download easily. more, more so stuff to my iPad flag, so I don't have to keep on checking the fucking server. And flag. Jason uh, nice Snell uh, tweeting, Yosemite feels like a major update to us in a way that Mavericks did not. I, really I agree with that. Yeah, that's yeah, that's like, I'm willing to upgrade to this. I'm not, I, I never, yeah. almost none of our machines are on oh, Mavericks. Oh, dear God. <laughs> well, this would be a good time to demonstrate our quick delete feature. <laughs> that's Johnny Ive with hair. 
It does look nice. Yeah. You know what? Johnny, you should consider it. I'd rather see him with Johnny's hair. choice. Let's talk about composing. Yeah, that'd be funny. <laughs> from a friend who's visiting in town that's looking for a good restaurant. So I'll start replying to this message. And I'll say, uh, let's see, check out. And in other news, Prince has just showed up at the French Open carrying a scepter. <laughs> oh, man. It's not a scepter, it's a baton. To protect himself. Another place, another message in my inbox. Thank God for Twitter. <laughs> you ever get bored? And now with a tap at the bottom, I restore my draft. Just like that. That's kind of nice, because... Drafts were always too hard to get back to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. On the iPad, definitely. Yeah. That's a quick look. No mention of health book. So let's talk Not yet. About Not yet. Now, of course, Spotlight's a super convenient way to search on your device. You just pull down one on your home screen, and you can execute these searches. And find things like launching apps or find an email message. That may be the only appearance of Johnny Ive at this event. We showed you in it's interesting. He isn't really like appearing on those, I don't think. So yeah. much more. I wonder how he likes having somebody else's hair on his head when he's... <laughs> Probably better than he likes having uh, Johnny, uh, Jimmy Iovine tell him what to do. Yeah. And yet, Wikipedia entries and directions. You can search for news, search for restaurants. I've has been absolutely silent songs, about the pizza acquisition. Library, but, also on iTunes. but he's silent about most things. Right. You can get results both for theaters uh, nearby as well as content. And I assume you can rearrange that in and some sort of a settings menu. Safari, the order. To your great Google By the way, strategy, no change in the keyboard, still all caps. I would have thought more about the time like that I had on the, on, the, on the iPhone. So that like, the font spotlight. looks different. Yeah. Next, keyboard does look keyboard. different. All right, here we go. Technology we call quick type. Huh. <laughs> Technology we stole from Android. So prior to iPhone, this was the state of the art in smartphone typing. But iPhone changed all of that. You know that toxic hell stew? <laughs> so it's still funny. <laughs> toxic hell <laughs> stew. They did change the, that's a different, that's a different font face, isn't well, it? Well, yeah, it's Cyrillic. Well, no, I mean the, the, the font. and dictation, but underlying it all have been the language models yeah, under it's definitely different. autocorrect. It's, it's spacing well, is now, increased. Yeah. Line spacing. In iOS 8, quick type supports predictive typing suggestions. Oh my god. So T9. You, type, <laughs> you get suggestions for the next Holy crap. I can't just believe like Android. that they're touting this. Well, it's better than autocorrect. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. So, it's context sensitive. For instance, in messages, if someone asks you, do you want to go for dinner or a movie? They'd be a little embarrassed. Dinner or a movie. Oh. Wow. SwiftKey's had this for three years. That toxic hell stew you uh, referred to? And it's personalized. It learns how you type. <laughs> but the stew's really, well, really good. I haven't seen that, yeah. where, where, it's, where it's actually pre-writing your response. Yes, yeah, Swiftkey does that. Canceled, okay. rescheduled, moved. These are kind of uh, yeah. formal it, terms. It uh, imports now, all okay. your emails and text messages, and from it learns, sorry, I unplugged you. From it, it learns uh, what kinds of things you say. I don't know if it would know based on who you're talking to. It does so in a way that's always protecting your privacy. Yeah, this all is the pitch, of course. Local to the device and none of your keystrokes. Because all of these other keyboards on Android now, send it back to the server. It's all done all server side. Languages. That's and Apple's got to keep that privacy pitch going. Yeah. That is increasingly going to be what mm -hmm. distinguishes it from the other guys. Next, of course, continuity. You get all the great continuity features. So now, on your iPad, you can pick up where you left off on your iPhone. You can set up an instant hotspot with no configuration on your iPad. You can receive your messages on your iPad. And when you receive a call from someone going like this, you can pick it up right Incidentally, it did look iPad. like they, uh, really they're predicting great. phrases in addition to individual words. So right. he does words. Yeah, he, he showed that off with yeah. dinner in a movie. Yeah. Messages is the most frequently used app Be nice if that shift nonsense was fixed. <laughs> No Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, it would be. Nobody said anything about it. We have some great enhancements. You can now name your threads. You can add or remove people from a conversation underway. And if you've ever been on one of those noisy threads that just keeps buzzing in your pocket, well, you can do not disturb on a per thread level, and you can choose when to leave the thread. This is pretty important. I like that. 
There's a lot of people that did no do longer Mr. Really be stuck like something in the Hangouts toxic hell to have group time. chat. Share your location with people. You can do that on Hangouts, but it's hard. Share their location with you. You can see it from right <laughs> at Toxic Hell Stew's icon on Twitter is a uh, Android robot with the heart bleed art. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good choice. But one feature that I really love is our new to follow that. talk. You just hold your finger down on the microphone button, and then you can just swipe up with your finger when you're done talking and send what you said. That's a nice feature. It's very Facebook really Messenger of them for yeah. video messaging as well. So to give you a quick That's better demo, than the way Google does it, where it like waits for silence after right. you finish talking. And so has, and Siri has been doing that. Although, didn't they add Sarah recently on the iPad the ability to hold the button and then let go of it? I think that was part of uh, iOS seven, maybe seven one. Well, you could pause as long as you want. And right. And as long as you continue to hold the button. And yeah, when you release it, that's just it. I'm waiting, done. Yeah. yeah. So I can just slide that, of course, as usual, goes straight into my messages. And what I see here is I have a thread between me So and add Voxer to the Sherlock. Well, I have that new in the upper right hand corner. <laughs> they're, they're, on, they're on a roll. <laughs> so if I tap it, it gives me all kinds of information about the participants and the message. For one, Craig and Kim have decided to share their location with me. So Craig, this is course, a replacement is to find my friends, I, I suspect. Well, Kim mm -hmm. is it is interesting. Nobody, nobody ever really wanted to find my friends. To I use it every single day. For I me do too. and Tom Merritt, and that's it. No, I no, have other, have other friends, friends besides the two of you. <laughs> Tom never goes anywhere, <laughs> by the way. I can keep sharing it until I stop uh, somewhere in the future. Yeah, this this is like glimpse really a little bit. Yeah. Is this do not or the... Pre-Sherlock's twist. So this right. is just built into messaging rather like than a, yeah. its own app now? Yeah. Huh. So you okay. can share your location. That makes more sense. Yes, it actually does. This is something that Google actually recently removed. They got rid of latitude yeah. and they built location into Google+. Plus, into the Google Plus. But not in this way. No. And I think this is probably this is better. better yeah. yeah, this is definitely better. All in one place. So they still appear in line in the thread. Eventually, they're going to get they're going to hook this to Beacon so that you can find your friends in the mall, which is really much more important to me most of the time. Find out where they are exactly in the building. In the, right. Yeah. Oh, somebody's in the bathroom. By the way, this is uh, Greg Joswiak or Jaws, as he's uh, known by the developers. Developers love Jaws. But it's even cooler. In fact, he came to Apple with uh, Steve Jobs in the next acquisition. So let's send back an audio message to her. Marketing chief of iOS. Hey, Kim, I'm just hanging out here with about 6,000 of our closest friends, having a good time while Craig takes a much deserved break backstage. Slide up. I like that. Like yeah, and that. The, I like that. The little pattern goes there. The yeah, the wave. Video the wave form. Very. They use that also on the phone call. That's nice. I like it. It's a good yeah. UI. It's, it a, is, it's but, taken but from SoundCloud. But we won't use it. Are you. Are you Really no, because be we've had this feature voice. in WhatsApp and yeah. Facebook it's, for a long time, yeah, and I never use it. It's something I never use. It's yeah. nice to have, I guess. But this is part of, I think, Apple's grand scheme to get you used to future devices. You'll use this with your iWatch. Right. And don't use it, and don't use WhatsApp is right. kind of what they're well, saying. That's, yeah, that's exactly right. You have no reason not to use this if they have all the same features. Well, I'm glad she likes it. So, so it's super duper easy it's a flattering to, to do these sort of things. You notice it instead would expire. Is he doing a duck face? I think he is. Yeah. Audio and video message. Well, the NSA has that, that in the database now. Yeah. To keep, whoa, what's this? So Craig should be backstage. A frightening group chat. Yeah, really. Wow, terrifying. that's a Craig's toxic house <laughs> two face. Yeah. Oh, I am. Don't toxic. do that voice again. <laughs> I have come for your toxic ales too. God, that's terrifying. <laughs> what happened to his hair? Right, you got to do something. I got. It. Is that Steve Ballmer? <laughs> no, that's the. I'm gonna need you to buy some more time. <laughs> That's wow. Funny. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I can, I can see doing funny. I thing. like it. The guy with the red hair in the front row likes it. <laughs> Needless to say, hair like that doesn't come easy. So while, while he's dealing with this crisis backstage, <laughs> That's very funny. oh, look, I've actually got an audio message from him. Now, what's really cool is I can actually listen to audio messages and reply to them from the lock screen simply by raising the iPhone to my ear. That's nice. Hey, Joss, uh, we got wow. the crisis contained back here. I'm, uh, I'm good to go, so wrap it up whenever you're ready. It sounded like and that it was coming through the PA. It you know? really did, yeah. Um, but that is a that is a very nice That's, feature. I like that. Yeah. This is again really iOS eight. Great hair crisis of 2014. I would like to point out that he's, he's hardlined. 
It's not just for power. They have a special connection to those those iPhones that they really should make available to all of us. Like being able to do a network because yeah. what they're doing is they're making sure that the Wi Fi they're not right. dependent on Wi Fi, and all of us want so that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Super easy. And Steve Jobs insisted on that uh, many years ago with the first iPhone. They had one. They had one. They had one the very first iPhone. one, they had trouble with it, yeah. and then after that. Right. But they have a special setup for those, and they should make that. Apple should make that available for people to. to well, it's video internet. out. It's uh, it's everything, right? And it's an internet connection. It's right. you know, and and there's a lot of us that would love that. Craig Federighi back on stage with. So of course, in, iCloud improved here. work great across a single app, and you're on your iOS devices, but now with iCloud Drive, you also have a great way to work across applications. Did he say the video message is self-destruct? Yeah, that's what he said. He said you can put it up. You can bring up your iCloud Drive panel. Kind of Snapchat-y, isn't it? Open documents directly Very Snapchat-y. Again, everybody else's stuff in right. your, in, but right. in, in, in the inside the corral. Yeah. That's right. In that application and edit it. Why not? Those edits are saved right back to their original location. But don't yell at people so for copying you. That. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> I do get the irony. Now, of course, you also have access to all of those documents on your Mac and on Windows as well. So that's iCloud Drive. Next up, something you weren't expecting from me, Enterprise. Now it turns out that iOS, yeah, well, they got one Enterprise. I was not expecting that. So iOS is a huge hit in the Enterprise. In fact, 98% mm, of the Fortune 500 uses iOS. And we're gonna get the last two. This is the bring your own device part, crisis that yeah. changed the way enterprise uses computing and killed Windows, frankly. Killed Flash. But it's killed Flash, also too. Because of the amazing array of technologies, both technologies that apply to all of us in protecting our privacy and security, Again, but very also important. enterprise this, manageability features that we've yeah. added to iOS. Big business over the years. provided by the NSA. Now, one of them that we just released in the last few months, I think is emblematic of our philosophy of the enterprise. And that's the device... Yeah, Dr. Mom points out, program. killed BlackBerry, now, so to speak, Master, as well. work at a company and they want to give you a device, they actually have to take the device they give you, rip it out of its box, connect it to some PC, image it with software to configure it. It's a big pain. But now with the device and Such a shift program, for Apple, which used to fight to get an enterprise and just really yeah. no success. Yeah. Box, and when you open it up, it'll automatically configure itself for your enterprise, setting up all of your mail and getting your mail messages, automatically setting up your calendar, and even downloading all your enterprise apps. It's that simple. Well, now in iOS can't possibly 8, be that simple. Our focus really have to wonder if the folks at Snapchat are saying, damn, we should have taken that $3 billion. Yeah. <laughs> and Dropbox. Dropbox too. Code protection of all the major data types, including third party. Maybe apps. that's where the Dropbox is going to be acquired. Message, rumors came from. Yes. Yeah. And we have features. a great productivity feature. I think we're all going to like. Yeah, messaging S mime. That's yeah. great. One thing I've wanted to have is it's a password just for my mail, so I can hand someone my my mail and messages. Mm -hmm. Like just so if I want to go into that, I'm going to I'm going to code it in. Yeah. Rather than just just the whole device. Reply for exchange yeah. for out of office, free busy information in calendar. And we support third-party enterprise document providers in addition to iCloud, integrated right into iCloud-capable applications. So now, now they're going to talk about health. Management. Yes, the enterprise guy back there. <laughs> so we also extend our management to include managed books and PDFs. And this is, of course, especially valuable for Recode has the uh, health so story. A few features for enterprise. Now... Yep. Something that we Unifreed. all care a lot about, health. There we go. They're just a little ahead of us. Wasn't well, that a sweet little icon? So, a heart, a little red heart. Yeah. Array There's the Nike fuel band. Devices or is it? Accompanying applications. Yeah, Every it is. <laughs> <laughs> is it the fuel band? Didn't no, that's the Fitbit didn't Flex. They, didn't they discontinue the fuel band? That bands? was the Fitbit, I'm sorry. And chronic medical conditions like high Remember that uh, mine's a little loose Tim Cook is the... I just keep pulling on I'm but sorry. You know, it's like half in, half out, because if it, if it doesn't, I can't hear it. I don't know why. Stay away from your plug. single comprehensive picture of your health situation. But now you can with health kit. Health kit. Healthkit this is new. We provides heard about a single this. place that applications can contribute to a composite profile of your activity This might and be health. the health and the game. Mm -hmm. comes with a corresponding Renamed. application. Health. And with health, health application. you can monitor all of your uh, metrics that you're most interested in your activity. As we but expected, not just that, 
this is merely a third-party repository for information protect your privacy so you have total control from over which third-party devices have access to which part of your health care information the Nike plus logo you can, for instance, apple filed a trademark for health kit three days ago yeah. um, heart rate information to uh the nike app and nike is working to integrate health kit so they use that information to help you in your pursuit of your personalized fitness goals. Now, we're also working with the Mayo Clinic, innovators in healthcare. And with their integration with HealthKit, they're going to be able that when an, a uh, patient takes, let's say, a blood pressure reading, HealthKit automatically notifies their app. And their app is automatically able to check whether that reading is within that patient's personalized healthcare parameters and thresholds Guys, uh, and if not blood pressure a little bit high the there hospital yeah. proactively notify a doctor and that doctor can reach back to that patient providing more timely care now now we think this is going to be really important for healthcare and the ceo of the mayo clinic agrees he says that we believe Apple's health Dr. Noseworthy? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> really? You made that up. Come on. We're proud to be at the forefront of this innovative technology with the Dude, Mayo I bet he smells good all the time. Aging Dr. Fine, Dr. Howard, Dr. Now, Noseworthy. First they went to Dr. Dre, but this is the second opinion. <laughs> now, they provide the technology that enables they should have the demo from Dr. Dre. hospitals <laughs> serving over 100 million Americans. I'm not a Americans. doctor, but... And so now, with their integration with HealthKit... Patients at these leading institutions will be able to get. It is a pretty big deal. I mean, when you look at the aging population, when you look at a lot of these integration, you know, getting this, and it is something that's very hard to do with. You don't control the ecosystem. Yeah. I remember, both Microsoft, Microsoft continues to have a product like this. Google killed their product like this. Yeah. Next up. Probably because of privacy issues. Sharing. Nobody trusted Google it's with their medical. Easy way to share what's important. Now, this is what when you were I looking was a for. kid, the refrigerator was the center of family sharing. Our refrigerator looked no, it still like is. this, except the kid had gray you know hair. But <laughs> Many modern refrigerators are We've not magnet friendly. Have you noticed that? I have. You if you pay family enough, family they are. On yeah. their iOS devices. And once you've you set up your on family them. as a family unit, you automatically get to share photos with a shared photo stream, to share calendars with your family, to share a fair, shared reminder list, and to automatically configure things like, with, with permission, find my friends. And find your kids' devices, which is something oh, I find my friends is not day. gone. It's, it's just really it's integrated into two places now. now of course, yeah, it's brilliant. We're also mm. used to in the home sharing physical media, but increasingly our media is in the form of songs from iTunes, Ooh. movies, books, and apps. Share media. Well, mm. now with family sharing, you can get it not just your purchases, this but the purchases huge. of yeah. all the members of your family. I mean, people have done this all along by having a single iTunes account, but right. that's why I have so much rap in my iTunes library. It's my son, <laughs> that's right. and my daughter loves French bistro music, right. so I've got a lot of accordion. Right. Now I don't have to worry about that. And this is for up to six that's great. family members. Inter interestingly, that's what Beats card. offered AT&T right. customers. And it works great for kids as well. And not just because they can make purchases on your credit card, but in fact, because when they do make a purchase, they get prompted to ask you for permission. Oh, oh. hallelujah. That's the big fix. Get and yeah. you get messaged. Hallelujah. Can I automatically decline permission? No. I think you probably No, it's not no. You it's not you, yeah, now. Yeah, you can probably yes. say. Is it not now? Yes, it's not now. Not now. Not now, Jimmy. After you mow the lawn. Mommy and Daddy are busy. We're taking a nap. Not now. Not now, not now, now Jimmy. Find oh, no, me in two now. hours. Can we share there that? should be an auto reply that says, Whatever did you take out the trash? Well, now... We're bringing together That's photos. That's much needed. With iCloud, so that every photo you're ta you take are available to you on all of your devices. The photo stream did that. I'm not sure how this. Well, the photo stream was only the last thousand or in that month. Yeah, yeah. We're not only preserving okay. the common organization edits you do. Yeah, you could fill up the memory in all your devices. Yeah, the business and models we're selling. Library. Plus, it's a lower res space. if you pull it down from yeah. an iOS device. Right to more photos in the cloud than it can physically store locally. So you can get at them all, wherever you That's are. Great. So it doesn't take up memory. Now, of course, if you have this many photos, you want great search. And so we, now in iOS 8 photos, we give you great search suggestions, for instance, of locations, uh, photos taken near where you are right now, photos taken a year ago today, 
photos taken in your home, but we also give you search. And so that search lets you match on things like location, time, and also on uh, uh, albums faces. that you've set Say up. Faces. Now, we also help you perfect yeah, your yeah, photos yeah, yeah, with yeah. great new smart editing controls. Someone was surprised so that NSA was saying that. I was a little sensitive right now. I know, but I was like, and also, how, is, how are you surprised that all yeah. the technology yeah. came from that? I'd like to give you a demo of our new photos app now. I never really use the editing functionality of the photos app. And the iCloud storage capacity is not stuck at five gigabits. It's just you have to buy gigabytes. You have to buy it more. You can. So here I am. It's stuck at 55 in case you're wondering. Cloud photo collection. And I have great search here. So I have all my suggestions, but I can also start typing. And you notice I get matches on location and time period, but also on album. So here I have Beach Day with Mandy. I can tap right in there. Look through these nice she photos. Knows. She came. Take a look. She Those are some good that. ones. <laughs> now, that's a photo that I think has potential. I'm not going to go on. But it's really quite dark and kind of washed out. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have these great smart editing controls that I can use to fix it up. And there's Lola. So I'm going to bring up our levels. <laughs> and you notice I have levels for light and color down there at the bottom. I'm going to tap on light. And I get this great smart light meter. Now, I can just drag yeah, this I think we may not this. use this, but I bet a lot of people, oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of people do. Oh, this stuff is useful. Really nicely. Yeah. So I can dial that in just the way I want. Yeah, it does a good job. What's happening under the it's a really, it's really it's a complex nice. curve operation right. that we would do in Photoshop, which except now you can just do it with a little slide. It brought brightness and contrast up, exposure and highlights down, and shadows up. Remember a friend of mine image uh, who was in professional, you know, he's like, I hmm. DVD. This is back in the old days. He's I DVD, I movie, I out of a job. <laughs> so this is Google Plusy like stuff. They, they're they're mm -hmm. figuring out what. What's wrong with the picture before you even start tweaking and making suggestions and then just swipe your finger to uh, fix what it knows is broken in the picture and a look at the difference of what we've been able to achieve before after i'm waiting for i awesome really awesome yeah oh he said awesome He's, he, he said, said awesome really that was no mistake i imagine it's just ambiance and snapsy what's really great is that yeah. my edits of course immediately went up to my cloud photo library and so they're available to all my devices so let's take a look at my ipad so here's my iPad. Now I'm going to go into my favorites album. And we notice that right now in favorites, I don't have uh, that picture because I didn't favorite it. I think Apple's unfair to families with more than six great. members. I think I'll make it one yep. of my favorites. I'll just tap on the <laughs> iPhone on the little heart. Apple has something to say about and you know Catholics <laughs> really and the Mormons. Stop. Yeah, the Duggins. You got to <laughs> stop. Right. You got to stop. You don't need more, you than, don't need six more than six people in a family. Yeah. If you got more than six kids, you're holding it wrong. I'm going to go into a crop. You should be holding it more. <laughs> close up crop here like this. Hit done. And yeah, I think a lot of people change. do this. I, you know, I, I, I watched Lisa uh, use I, you know, get home from a, f a day and use iPhoto and boom, 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 mm -hmm. get it up on our blog much faster than I do because I'm using Lightroom and I have to. Yeah, it's a, it's a chore. It's a chore. What about the this map? makes it fun and easy. Well, good news. We are working on a new grounds up photo solution for the Mac. Ah, iPhoto replaced. With iCloud in mind. Interesting. That's going to be shipping mm. early next year, but I'd like to give you a sneak peek now. I wonder if All they'll right. update the rest of the... Uh... So let's take a look. You said this is like shipping. Photos. Sweet. You said this is shipping Mac. next year. Yeah. So you see, I so guess... it's not part of uh, Yosemite. Yeah, Beautiful. Very early. Buttery scrolling video. here. I have my moments. Right here, I can pinch out if I want. It's too bad moment. Alex just got up uh, because this is something I think he'd have something to say about. To years. Yeah, look at that. I can scrub through my photos like this, even in year view. iPhoto probably was due for a rewrite, but all of the iLife apps are. Yeah. Right. Zoom right in. You watch as I magnify this photo, the interplay with the title bar. It's really gorgeous. I'm going to go ahead and sl uh, browse through these. They sure like themselves. And they're just calling this photos. Photos, I think. Yeah, yeah. Really that makes more sense. Potential, but it well, use some brightening up. it'd be very difficult to take iPhoto and make it do the iCloud you know, here, stuff. These light and color meters. Well, I can just yeah. close these controls. So, Alex, they're going to replace iPhoto in real time. Not till next As I year. make the lighting adjustment, and notice how some but of these a are going a ground up, up application, going much like they did with iWork. They it's restarted with iWork. It's really great. This is their puppy filter. Do the same with color. Let's just boost the color. Bring out the sky, bring out the skin tones. I mean, really, the answer is to easy. build up from the from scratch. You learn what you need to know, right. and then you and then you move on to the oh, next one. Apps are always better the second time around.
of photos coming song. to Yosemite in the future and to the new photo solution with iCloud Photo Library coming with iOS 8. Woo! Yeah, makes sense. And I think yeah. you probably see, uh, see that across the board. Especially with an app that is relatively not, it's very complex, so but not as complex as pro apps. Right. In your organization yeah. across your iOS devices. No mention of Aperture, Soon, however. With your Mac Harumph. and via the web, Windows as well. Now this is all your photos and also your videos. Ah, videos too. And these are in their original format and their full iMovie. resolution. I'm going to rewrite iMovie. Keep it. Now this uses your iCloud storage. He's going to have to so talk about it. Now you know why they built that server farm in uh, North Carolina. Oh. 99 cents a month for 20 gigabytes. First five gigs free. Four bucks a month for 200 gigs. This is directly competitive with Google Drive. Tiers up to one terabyte. Yeah, Google Drive, of course, recently Ooh. dropped their price. Dropbox said we're not going to drop our price to match Google Drive. And Apple Dropbox has trumped them. 200 gigabytes for great four dollars is major features insane. coming to iOS, but of course, so uh, a whole lot 100 gigabytes, two dollars on Google here. Drive, a I terabyte, ten dollars. I bet you, I bet you, Apple's very close to that. One is Siri. Now, it seems like it's right in there. You take yeah. your yeah. phone and you plug it in, for instance, in the car. You can say, "Hey Siri," and start talking to Siri Hands free. without having to even touch That's your phone. That's much and needed. We have song recognition with Shazam. This is all now, Google. Uh, you just start up Siri, and there's a song playing yep, around Google you. Google Now and stuff. It'll tell you yep. what it is, and you can even purchase it. Makes right more sense there. than OK. I've always thought OK was Siri weird. Yeah. Hey Siri is great. Yeah. So in fact, everybody says that anyway. I say that anyway. Hey, Siri, <laughs> wake I'm, up. Every time I push the button, I say, hey, Siri. I do. <laughs> you don't need to, obviously, but it's hard. Finally, everybody says Siri, I think. We now have great turn by turn nav, vector -based lunar maps calendar and support. Turn by turn directions. I'd like to see we Julian calendar support. Calendar. I, yes. It's great <laughs> for holidays and birthdays. That's for Asia, of course. Improved Chinese predictive input and improved weather data. So that is a look. Thank you. Thank you. It's iOS 8. And now the surprise, the one more thing, although yep. I doubt they'll say it. So that's a look at the consumer part of iOS 8. Here's for developers. To tell you the other half of the story, I'm going to hand it back to Tim. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Craig. It's an amazing new feature. I like Hey Siri. And if yeah. we ended the keynote now, Maybe he is design. going to say one more thing. But there is a lot more. Oh. And the second part of the story is what iOS 8 provides for developers and extending your capability to make even more incredible apps and apps you could not create before. Now, all of these apps are delivered via this, the app store. This might get a little inside baseball. Mm. The app store Maybe. now has over 1.2 million of your apps on it. This is a Nobody's phenomenal gonna clap, number. Nobody's going to clap. And the market around these apps right. for, is for attention. unbelievably vibrant. 300 million people visit the app store every week. And these people aren't just browsing. They are downloading. They've now downloaded over 75 billion apps. These are mind-blowing numbers. Now, what we want to do is make the App Store even better. And so we're rolling out a number of new features on the store, starting with demos. We're adding an Explore tab mm. to help users find the app they're looking for more. So you can browse through categories and subcategories. We're that. adding top trending searches to make search even better. It's great mm -hmm. to see WWDC. You know what developers the want, the they way. want demos, they yeah. want refunds. We're making finding your this search is about even better by making it okay. faster by adding they a continuous scrolling purchasing. list. Oh that's cool. We're adding related searches to make it easier to find exactly if you just the fix the damn search for. and with a new editor's choice logo mm. users can find the best apps also for the first time we're giving the developers the capability to form app bundles so users can buy multiple apps and developers like that yeah. Yeah. I do read Jimmy Iovine's idea to have albums. Yeah. 
So users can buy multiple apps at a discounted price with just one tap. Also, we're introducing app previews. So developers can make short videos. There you go. Uh, videos. So it's not a try and... So developers yeah, it's can better make than short nothing. videos yeah. of some great features. And the users can make certain it's an app that they would want. Video is better than nothing. It's showing Monument Valley there. Yeah, it's really cool. For the first really cool. time today, uh. a new service, a new beta test service uh. called Test Flight. Yeah. This developer is <laughs> very much want. crazy. They typically will get maybe yeah. 100 mm -hmm. codes. Can Did they buy Test Flight? Is that? Yeah. Test We're talking about the same app and get the results right in Test Flight. Yeah. And it's all free. Yeah, developers like that. It's still yeah. not a demo, of course. There but. are many more features of the app. Yeah, this was something uh, the Apple acquired. The app but we are really February. investing a ton in the App Store. It is a huge they release. Acquired it from Everything Lee. will be available in the fall. Now, that brings us to the SDK. And for those of you that are not developers, the SDK is a software development kit that enables developers to make all of the amazing apps. This release is the biggest release since the launch of the App Store. And it will give developers the capabilities and tools to make things they haven't dreamed of and to push to a whole new level. And to tell you all about the SDK, Greg Federighi. I want to invite my colleague Superman back to the stage. <laughs> Superman. Wait, Fairly has he come up four times now? Yeah, no. he keeps I coming just... back. <laughs> no Phil Schiller, no Johnny Ive, and no Jimmy Iovine, Dr. Dre making a short telephone appearance. So, He's doing a really good job. With this year's SDK, Craig has, the team yeah. has done just an unreal job. It's like he's being groomed 4, for succession. New developer APIs. <laughs> now, I want to start Oy. with something that I think is that is not something developers profound, applaud, <laughs> and that's extensibility. So, with extensibility, applications from the App Store will be able to extend the system and offer services to other apps. Last pass. <laughs> Sorry. Well, they have you know they have that uh, keychain. I know, but it's this will be. Now, of course, one of the reasons we're all so comfortable installing so many apps from the App Store are iOS's security model. Apps are isolated inside of sandboxes where they can access their own data but can't get at your personal information or mess with other apps. This is something they didn't put in iOS well, the handle extensibility 8, but they are going to put in OS 10. Right? We wanted to build on this or maybe they are. sandboxing model. So now extensions live inside an application's own sandbox. With this is good. Own data. This is something uh, Rene Ritchie was talking about last week. Right. By way of iOS Rene is very interested in this capability. Mechanism. Something Android's had for some time. Extension. Now, extension can even project UI right back into the originating That's great. app. Now this enables some great things. For instance, in addition to iOS. the system's built-in sharing options, an app like Pinterest can offer a share sheet to Safari. Yeah, this is... And Something we've talked about action, for a long time on Mac. I'll be interested to see if they tie that back into the desktop as well. Right. So everything's all... Right they should. Yeah, they should. Because of continuity. The web pages, web content right there. Now we're also supporting photo filters inside of photos and enabling third parties to define their own document providers that work with any iCloud drive. This is something that's been missing from iOS. Yeah, it really absolutely. will enhance it significantly. Finally, we're enabling third-party apps to define widgets that can now go in notification center. I think it feels like time for a demo. <laughs> so let's start. A little cheddar there, filter. but it's okay. So we're back here in photos, and I've got a nice photo here of a flower. And I'm gonna go ahead and edit. And you notice in addition to the options here at the bottom of the screen, we have at the top left this extensions button. I'm going to click that, tap that rather, and you notice this is probably the biggest change to iOS since the App Store. And one from That's what he water. said. So I'm Did he say that? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Channeling <laughs> Craig Frederick. Right here in the context of no, it, it is. Though. Oh, that's yeah, so is. cool. Bringing up their own UI. It's app mm. within app. Yeah. This is huge. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It's a box inside of a box. 
it's right back inside of my photo album. It's that Ooh. easy. Uh, that's cool. I'll give you that. Then next, let's take a look at widgets. So I'm gonna just pull down Notification Center. I have my existing widgets here in my Today View. But you notice in addition to my widgets, down here at the bottom it says one new widget available because I've downloaded an app recently that contains a Notification Center widget. So I'm gonna tap Edit. This has kind of been the holy center. grail of computing so since OpenDoc. Position right. it where I want among my widgets in my Today View. Really, you think about, you start thinking about, you build an app that is really a holder for other apps right. that right here inside builds a center for them. Yeah. Center. This is now something this Android does not do iPad very well. Right. As well. Let's take a look at iPad. And of course, Apple can promise and it works security. Say it works better to do this yeah. when you have tight control over everything. Interactive widget from eBay. So I'm bidding on a Aziz uh, in our chat room says this is iOS and, 8 appception. Uh, apparently, I'm being outbid. So I can now write inside of notification, take advantage of the interactivity of widgets. It's almost like it's look at that. It's the personalized homepage. Yeah, right. it's and an alternative user interface. I like it. All inside of notification I center. I like it. Now to wrap it up, I want to show you extensions. It's in nice Safari. how you can um, bring up Safari. do a lot of customization so outside of the settings view. menu too, just the from within the notifications here, itself. Um, with some information on a beautiful guitar. All these demos have been on iPads, not on iPhones. Text here is in Japanese. Probably easier to do in Yeah, the screen is a little smaller too. Fortunately, I have a Bing translation extension. Bing translation. My. I think we could probably say goodbye to Google. Down here in the second row, Bing Translate. I'm going to tap on that. Oh, Google will keep on building stuff for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't think Apple will put any Google stuff at all. Oh no no, I, they won't. Uh, they did still show in Safari. They still showed search with Google. So you know, I, I think that no, users really cut it out with that. Yeah. yeah. Now for our extensions grand finale, let's put that on my Pinterest board. You see, Pinterest has an extension right here. I'm going to tap on that, and this is actually Koch, a good UI defined. Who uh, was one of the original Cyanogen mod like developers board, says like customization board, and extensibility was the main differentiation point. So uh, on Android, slide through the different photos on the page. seems that's gone now. Find so a, a big and Android developer saying, and thumbs up. It. And that's hmm. a quick look at extensions in iOS 8. I'm loving that. Yeah, that's going to be really cool. Now, there's one important kind of extension that I did fail to mention, and that's the ability to install system-wide third-party Keyboard. Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. They got tired yeah, of going complaining. They were just like, okay, here's the deal. We'll just Hallelujah. Everybody wants this, but hardly like anyone will use it. Yeah, yeah but that's fine, but yeah. for power users who do right. want it. I think a lot of this is like, we're going to give you everything that Android does this in a safe box. Important. If that keyboard requires or want, you want to grant it ability, it can ask for access to the network this is key. Uh, to provide extended functionality. We put those controls in your hands. And he is showing swipe. That's extensions and iOS 8. That is, that is, Impressive. frankly, that's a game changer for me. That's yep. huge. Next up, Touch ID. It's going to be big. This is the From key the fingerprint right? We introduced Touch ID. 5S. Developers were excited about the potential. Opening and this up. There's would no be question huge. why Touch ID oh, yeah. has been extremely popular in people authenticating into their devices. If you look at passcode usage on iOS before Touch ID, it was less than half. On iPhone 5S, 83%. People love using Touch ID. And now, third party apps can take advantage of Holy Touch ID. Holy well. moly. Okay. Mint, he's showing Mint, but your bank would immediately adopt this. Oh, yeah. So would I would hope stores, online stores, this is big. First it'll be polling, and then it'll be voting as well, I mean, uh, 10 years from now, from your iPhone. So it'll identify successful fingerprint matches, but it always keeps the fingerprint data itself completely protected inside of the secure enclave in the A7 processor. The fingerprint information is never exposed to third-party apps. This or is the something the system, for that Steve would not have Very done, secure. and it is a good thing. This That's is one of those mm -hmm. one of those things that I thought Apple would never release. That is huge. Yeah. Very big. Oh, again. White balance. They're really and opening focus. up the iPhone. Oh, yeah. We've enhanced the PhotoKit API with faster performance, the ability not just to read but also to write to the photo library, and this is now <laughs> your cloud photo library, and perform non-destructive edits. 
It's really great. This is something, in fact, now, Android recently took away <laughs> in KitKat. But now we also have this is very big. HomeKit. Ah, here's the home part. Oh, here we go. Home automation. This is very big stuff. This iOS 8, huge. Yeah, there Apple's doing the right thing. There are a lot of great home thing. automation devices coming on the market these days, and they have companion apps, things like lights, my hue. and door locks, the, uh, webcams, garage doors, and thermostats. But you know, no each nest. of them have their own application, <laughs> That's the and they end up defining their own network protocol, their own security mechanisms. Well, we thought we could bring some rationality to this space. Yes, we started you could. working with the leaders in home automation devices. And we've come up with I a home home kit free with a common TI. network protocol that has secure pairing to ensure that only your iPhone. They're going to do their own. This is the end of Zigbee. This is the end of the end of all the other standards. This is, this is, this is Siri integration. Individual oh, devices oh, oh. in your home with HomeKit, you can group I think devices I just bought a new and iPhone. changes into oh, yeah. Siri. Oh, and then smokes. with Siri integration. Hey Siri, open the garage door. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Huge. Siri, turn on the living room lights. Your door is locked. The thermostat is lowered, and your lights are dimmed. That's home. Now I, I want to know what about inter interoperability. It, it, people have invested quite a bit in home automation, and may not work with them. I still think it's that. That's been a nation market so far. I mean, I, I think. Yeah, you're right. They can just take it over. So today, especially with iBeacon, you're a developer, yeah. and you're writing an application, and it needs a web component. Well, you end up really having to write two apps in one. In addition to the writing the client side using Xcode and our frameworks, you have to write the server side of the app. You have to write server side app logic. You have to deal with authentication, asset storage, database storage, search, even push notifications, and then you got to pay somebody to host it all. Well, now with CloudKit, CloudKit takes over the cloud part and provides you yeah. with a client side Apple's programming model into the that lets Google you access mm -hmm. compute engine, the EC3, right. storage, search, and more. Yeah, and going after Amazon when it comes and Google, to pain, and rack space. CloudKit is effectively free. Yeah. Wow. There's limits. Develop a whole <laughs> limit. <laughs> Some limits may apply. So, CloudKit scales the data allocated to your app and bandwidth based on the number of users using your app. This is huge, And this too. goes all the way up to granting you free a petabyte of assets, Holy 10 terabyte cow. of database. This is what all, all these the database, these, all these constructively um, use. That server farms that they've kit. been building. This is what this is yeah. designed for. Yeah. They're finally online. This, this is very big. Of course, Google's uh, App Engine and uh, Amazon's EC3 are very empowering for app development. Next, EC3 I want to move on to something huge in the area of 3D graphics. Yeah. And it's called Metal. <laughs> Whoa. <So> <laughs> <laughs> did he? Did he? Did, did he do? Did he, know, he do the horns? Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah. OpenGL is the standard-based <laughs> way for high-performance 3D graphics uh, on I iOS, love you, giving you access Rick. to the power of the A7 processor. But increasingly, if you look at what goes on in the performance of the game, in addition to what the game wants to accomplish, <laughs> OpenGL ends up being a thick layer of overhead between the game and the hardware. Well, now we have metal. And metal dramatically Program to reduces the metal. That's what we used to call it. Yeah, Program to the metal. Giving the game near bare to the metal access. That's what you to the want. Power of course, a developer. The results are stunning. I'll Up tell you, if Apple delivers on all this, this is a huge home rates. run on Holy iOS. Holy cow! Now, all, all, all around, huge home run. Reduced uh, overheads. You get access not just to graphics, but to Open the compute GLs. power of the GPU. Been a problem mostly because of poor support. Yeah. Well, Apple's never liked it. You can always right. like the most out they of the They don't own it. Now they now, now they're going to give you something they own. With the leading providers. Crytek, Unity, EA, and Epic demo. all supporting. Of course, Unity's platform. very important because that's the cross-platform tool. Metal in just a few weeks is truly stunning. Let's start with EA. And the work they've done taking their console level title, Plants vs. Zombies. This is a great first person iOS. shooter, by the way. I really enjoy it. They're able to put over one million on triangles on the screen at a time. That looks good. And do depth of motion effects, depth of field effects. They can uh, never this is huge. Imagine. Wow. In fact, they're using their Again, yeah. iOS has been really important for games. Right. Uh, they've really disenfranchised. One of the reasons Nintendo is essentially out of business. Right. And. Uh, was able to bring getting better capabilities in here is huge. Again, he keeps saying console level. Yeah. All, think about all of the things they've just announced for yeah. iOS. 
the this is up to iOS is now this. Yeah. Yeah. Terry center. McCracken has said it's on the center Twitter, of the universe. Yeah, yeah. And rightly so. That's yeah. where they make their money. Right, we're going to include your desktop, but this is the Infinity Blade Three, ladies and gentlemen. Tim Sweeney. Tim, come on up. Uh, just uh, a stunning array of new features in iOS 8. I see why they yeah. need 4,000 APIs. We've had the opportunity to work with Metal and to illustrate some of the possibilities. Tim Sweeney's with Epic Games. A Zen Garden. Now, this environment was built in Unreal Engine 4 on a high end Mac. And now, thanks to Metal, we're running it on iPad in real time with full fidelity and performance. Ooh. Metal That's quite beautiful. Look at the reflections. That... Increase in detail making it possible for developers like us to create a new generation of vivid and interactive 3D experiences. Now, Josh Adams is the programmer who wrote much of the code that's running. Josh, can you explain what we're seeing here? <laughs> yeah, sure. That's First really all, beautiful, but it's... Metal support for pre-compiled shaders. It's funny because Epic gets up there every year with Infinity Blade. Right. And now, first up, let's check out this cherry tree. So I can drag on the screen to wow. put petals onto the tree. They start falling to the ground. These are particle effects. There are about 5,000 petals here being physically simulated. And I can interact with them by touching on the screen to blow wind through the air. Strong area. physics engine is very important, of course. All right, next up, so we have a, a lot of particles. I mean, it's filled yeah. with hundreds of fish. Metals freed up enough to Look at the reflections. Time, we're going to have each of them running their own artificial Wow. Animals, which you can see here as I Holy drag it on the cow. water. This is on an iPad. There's a few more fish here than a real koi pond, but since metal is... I hope they release this. It'll be fun to play with. And of course, every Zen Garden needs some sand to rake. So, I go over here. I can rake any pattern I want into the sand here. Now, artists love that you can make an effect like this without needing a programmer like me to make a one-off effect for draw call reduction or other optimizations. Yeah, I would, I would actually buy this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I just goof around with this. It'd be yeah, like, you're just standing in line, raking the sand. And I can tap on it, pour out some water, which then turns to a couple hundred butterflies. But of course, not going to stop there. Jason Snell tweets, like, so God, it's full of butterflies. Me, and then guide around the area. So there are about 3,500 individually animated and rendered butterfly meshes here. I have to keep telling the artists to turn the numbers up and up because they did not think it was going to be possible. Pretty cool, huh? Jan Kum of <laughs> WhatsApp has tweeted, very flattering to see Apple borrow numerous WhatsApp features to iMessage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, won't be so flattering. <laughs> yeah. That's that's a little, nice funny. way to say um, yeah. Not that he's bitter. Here in a scene that we couldn't have dreamed of building prior to Metal delivering a tenfold increase in rendering efficiency. We we're watching Avatar. The level of graphics capability yeah, really on good. iPhone and iPad now is a stunning breakthrough. Um, we're proud to have been a part Finally, of it. Finally, you see and, the, uh, of course, the we'd potentially A7 chip, chip really so yeah. being used here. We will be making the Zen Garden available. In Notice the how many times they said. Thank you. Zen Garden available. For free. Free. For iOS 8. The question is, will we get iOS 8 today as developers? I mean, not It's personally. amazing. And that was, it's easy to forget on an iPad. Yeah. It's incredible graphics. They and let's point hand. out the same chip is in the current iPhone 5S. Right. So That's you right. have the same exact capabilities. From high-end 3D gaming to casual gaming and sprite kit. Notice how many times they said sprite console level graphics. Yeah. WDC, and it's been a big hit with people building yeah, casual with, games uh, Airplay. on the app store. Well, but Airplay has some latency. And now this year, we you know, really enhanced work. sprite kit with some things that make your casual games just that much more fun. I still think they're going to end up putting in Apple TV. You know, in, in the little box. You have to put an A7 and put all this stuff up, and then, you're, then you have a console for $99. Oh, I see your point. You're absolutely right. Yeah. You put this in the Apple TV. And even inverse kinematics. And now, Don't know if you can do it for, for 99 first bucks. First so. time on iOS, we're bringing oh, Apple could. Scene kit. A lot of kits today. Inverse kinematics is pretty interesting to put in as an API. Scene kit is a 3D scene render, and now it's been enhanced. It's designed for casual games with an integrated physics engine, particle systems, and support for scripted actions. So these are two great solutions for casual games. So high-level <laughs> support for low-level right. capabilities. Code. Developers love hearing that word. Now, Xcode is the tool set we use to build all applications for the Mac and iOS. And Xcode is in fact... Marco Arment's pointing out that Metal and Sprite Kit on our platform. Encourage the games to go iOS first and iOS only. Right. Because if you develop to that hardware, you're... Well, and it's just 
you make it e easy to develop for, right? Again, when you combine that with a fragment, fragmented market on the Android you know, that's continuing to fragment. Objective C came to Apple, of course, with Next. So well for 20 years, we absolutely uh -oh. love it. Uh, but we had to ask ourselves the question. Uh, new programming language. If we had Objective C, without the baggage of C. What? Ooh. Developers are going. We did more what? than think about it. Objective. We have a new programming language. Oh my god. <laughs> Well, if you're gonna learn four thousand new APIs, you might as well learn a new programming language. I'm glad I didn't. I didn't I'm glad I didn't go any further with my. It uh, looks like a diving bird. Aaron Hillegas is going. I have a whole new set of courses. Swift. Swift. And it totally rules. Swift. Swift is fast. It is modern. It is designed for safety, and it enables a level of interactivity and development that you've Google's never been doing seen this, of course. Mm -hmm. Go and other. When it comes to speed. Languages. Swift is great. Compare Python, a popular scripting language, with Objective-C when it comes to something like, let's say, complex object sort. Objective-C is a lot faster, but Swift oh. is faster still. And take something like RC4 encryption, extremely com computationally intensive. Uh, Python gets utterly crushed in this particular benchmark. An objective, but look at Swift. Now, Swift is also modern with features like closures, generics, type inference, multiple re about four return times types, faster than Objective C. <laughs> Developers Look love at those guys. So name many spaces. That guy. I know, I know. What, what was the, the word? What was the key <laughs> word in there? I'm going to the word. Enthusiasm. I think all of them were the key words. Multiple oh, returns. Closures are important. You know how many people at home are going, what in the heck are these guys talking about? With Swift, you're able to reduce a common pattern that you might see in your Objective-C code like this and reduce it to something as simple as this. Oh, okay. And Swift defines yeah. away large classes of common programming errors. They just aren't possible. This is smart. Now, Swift is completely native to Cocoa and Cocoa Touch. It's built with the same LLVM compiler as Objective-C using the same optimizer and auto vectorizer, and it has the same arc memory management model and the same, same runtime, run time. Wow. which means that your Swift code can fit right alongside I wonder if it's a precompiler to Objective-C Objective mm -hmm. in Couldn't the same be. application. Couldn't be. Couldn't be faster for us. Mm -hmm. Now, Swift also enables a level of dynamism and interactivity in development that we've never oh, seen before that. with a feature we call Playgrounds. To demonstrate oh, Swift and Playgrounds in action, I'd like to bring to the stage Chris Latner. Come on up, Chris. So this is uh, smart. Remember, the Department of Defense tried to do this with a language they called ADA. They want to use the language to protect programmers Thank against you, themselves. I'm right. thrilled to be here and to be the first person to give you a taste of Swift. Let me show you how fun Tastes and like chicken. it is to write Swift code. So this is what you want. You want something that will have strong typing, this is a Swift have modern program. features like closures, I start typing, but be fully interactive. Response. That's why they use the Python example. It's actually right. running my code Python will let you do this. And displaying oh. the result in the sidebar to the right. So Python is an interactive scripting language. It's great for learners. Course, Swift uses type inference and has powerful string processing capabilities which make it as easy to use as a scripting language without sacrificing any performance. That, that, that really is the holy Swift grail. Swift was right. designed from the ground up for Coco and Coco Touch. So, of course, I have their full power at Still my Still a lot fingers. of visual. Farhad Manju now says on Twitter, this is the big product that Tim Cook was hinting at. Yeah. All the way up to this a is really huge. Developers, if this is well implemented, will jump at this. Okay, yeah. Keep it simple. And, I think I'll write and again, what you end up with is a whole bunch of developers that don't know See, right. <laughs> like, which you know, is like, good. Well, it's good for what Apple. you want. Yeah. It's good for Let's Apple. I mean, you know, you, yeah. it's not hard to learn C, though. It's not. It's just that it, but you start going, you know, you deep into here, something. Uh, the playground sees I've loaded an image. I can even the question see is, right will you be able to tailor way. Swift? <laughs> now, Swift is loaded with <laughs> dump, high end dump, features dump. like generic. You might be the first person to do that. No, Drool all enough actually posted a picture of. Here you can see I'm using array of strands. <laughs> I'm using the functional map algorithm to apply a closure to every element. Yeah, closures and map. This is this is very powerful stuff. Of images, all with a simple line of code. Yeah, this is very powerful stuff. 
Now, all these resources are part of this game that I'm working on, and one piece that I'm should have been called IC is the flight path for the blimp that we okay. have. Now, this is a simple loop that computes the position for the blimp over time as my game plays. And in addition to seeing individual values, this is one of the real strengths of uh, even allow me to Python. The is this kind of interactive. Of a value wow, over it's great for learners. Yeah. And so now I can immediately see that this equation will cause my blimp to slowly sink. Yeah, you can definitely see a lot of new yeah, programmers like jump into this. Like Mathematica, too. Students might use this mm -hmm. to model mathematics. Has Apple actually done coding on stage at previous events? No, actually. I don't I, recall. It's been a long time. They did in, in the early days at, uh, at WWDC. You'd see code. This is very much Mathematica. So now that we have this the way we want, we can take this and copy it. And let's go to the game that I'm working on. It's right here. Now, this is a playground just like before. But here, I have a game Holy in the moly. code written using SpriteKit. Holy cow. Now, you can see our blimp going left and right, straight across the scene. And you I know, on the one hand, I hate the idea of, of kids learning to program in a proprietary language for a proprietary platform. This is absolutely not going to be cross-platform. Yet, this is exactly what you want to give kids. Well, yeah, and, and once they learn how to do it here, their yeah. resistance to doing it somewhere else is going to be much higher. It's not, it's not like small talk is... Uh, really easy to try out new things. This is very Just powerful. by adding a few lines of code, I can enable sprite kits per pixel collisions, field forces, and lighting effects, getting a, a much more interesting result. Now, Swift Playgrounds even give you full power over time and with this timeline at the bottom of the screen, I can go forwards and backwards through the execution wow. of my game. So I can wow. really see those effects in action. That's amazing. You can see the balloons interacting with each other and with the blimp, just like that. I presume there's a debugger Playgrounds as well. Playgrounds give me unprecedented power said. to see my app in detail and give me full control when I want to refine and polish my application. I'd love to know more but of, of course, the technical Swift works details great with Xcode and runs great on iOS. So let's now jump and see what the finished product looks like. If it's a pre-compiler or doesn't look like it. Here we go. And this is the game that we just built. It looks pretty great. Now, as there is uh, a Swift told you earlier, parallel scripting language, which is now down. <laughs> the scene kit is super easy to build a, a 3D version. I wonder if this is an acquisition. And that's just a quick taste and quick look at Swift. It came from the Argonne National Labs. It was in. We love it. Thank you very much. Yeah, I don't. I don't think this is related. I think Apple probably brought, bought the trademark. But this was something developed that, by Swift. taxpayer money. It gives you access to all of Coco and Coco Touch, so you can build everything from a simple example, like you saw there with Chris the most powerful applications you can imagine. This is a and spectacular is really amount of new stuff. Lot to gate. absorb. It comes with complete Xcode support with indexing, code completion, and debugging. And there's a Swift language yeah, I think this one's up there with the iPhone launch, the iPad launch. You know, I mean, these are... Along with complete reference documentation. And when iOS and OS I'm going to are the Apple Dev Day Center just one, real quickly to see. You can submit apps written in Swift to the App Store. That is Swift. So as you've been able to see, iOS 8 is a huge developer. Nothing about Swift yet on the uh, developer page. End user release with features like the new quick type keyboard, tap to talk in messages, health, family sharing, and great new photos with iCloud Photo Library, but it's also an um, unprecedented developer release with technology like extensions, Metal, huge. and Swift. Three huge new technologies That's for iOS. iOS 8. It's going to be available to those of you here in beta today. Very good. Not unexpected, but no, that's, yeah, exactly. that's what developers want. And you guessed it, available to everyone else in the fall and it'll run on all of these devices. It goes down to the that iPhone 4S, iOS the iPad 8. 2. Thank you. So uh, that's good news. Uh, but a lot of those real-time graphics, everything else, I mean, you're going to obviously want to have a, a newer iPad or iPhone for that.
There is a, a Swift language guide in iBooks, apparently. Incredible release. It's been a fun morning. You can probably see that from us. I hope you've enjoyed it as well. You, thank you. Huge. No, no hardware announcements. This morning, you've Not much seen of a surprise. Yosemite. The future for Apple TV. of OS X with an incredible new design, amazing new features. This is one place you could announce a 4K display. I right. would be very happy to see that. You've seen iOS 8, the biggest release of iOS since the introduction of the App Store. It's huge for developers and massive for everyone else. And perhaps more importantly, you've seen how our operating systems devices and services all work together in harmony. Together, they provide an integrated and continuous experience across Unfortunately, all if you search iTunes calls. for Swift, you're gonna get a lot of Taylor Swift albums. I'm gonna try to how narrow it down to books here. And extend their experience further than yet. they've ever done before. And how they can create powerful apps even faster and more easily than they've ever been able to. Apple engineers platforms, devices, and services together. We do this so we can create a seamless experience for our users that is unparalleled in the industry. This is something only Apple can do. You've seen a few people on stage this morning, but there are thousands of people that made today possible. And I'd like to take a moment before we depart and recognize them. Would everyone from Apple stand up that has something, something to do Steve with always did today? And he always thanked the family possible. members who had to put up with stand the long up, hours of Apple employees. And of course, the front rows not as full as as usual of Apple employees, but in fact, it looks like they salted. It would be kind of weird right. if there were too many of them. Well, it looks like they salted the them throughout the auditorium, which is unusual. Again, this is something different. They're all Apple employees, in fact. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> Turns out it was an inside and crowd. Thousands more back in Cupertino who were watching, and I want to thank them too, and from all over the world. It's the privilege of a lifetime for me to work with all of these incredible people. I hope everyone has a huge conference. Enjoy the week. Thank you very much. And so Tim Cook wraps up the keynote of WWDC. Now the journalists get kicked out and the developers get to work uh, in uh, special uh, sessions throughout the, the rest of the week. Uh, I think you're probably going to see a lot of pundits immediately start to write uh, what a disappointment the uh, keynote was because there was no new hardware. And yet, I think if you're a developer or you understand the Apple ecosystem, you can see what a massive, massive announcement this was. Almost everything they talked about was laying a powerful groundwork for developers to build, develop, not just developers, but you know, look at the health stuff, look at the home automation stuff for entire industries to build the Apple e ecosystem into something much more powerful. Yeah, I mean, it's really providing that foundation, you know, and it's really building that whole ecosystem. Everyone talks about getting into the living room. I mean, they're getting into the whole house. You know, I mean, everything, everything being tied, whether it's your computer, your your iOS device, you know, everything is, is completely integrated. And I, I think that we'll probably see things like the Apple TV get pulled into that fold over time, you know, and a lot of other things being added that we're seeing today. Yeah, some people are disappointed that there wasn't any hardware announced, but. This is just, you know, it's 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 setting it up for later in the year. Exactly. Yeah. They didn't mention Beats, not once. I mean, there, that was, a, there was a phone was call to Dr. Dre, a little wink, wink. But I mean, mm -hmm. they didn't they didn't mention a lot of things, and they didn't really need to. Yeah. The the I think the key you you nailed it here is Apple is telling this is a developers conference. We warned you at the beginning. That's what you're going to hear. But what they told developers is Apple is doubling down on the ecosystem. They're opening it in key ways, which I think is very important. You can double down on the ecosystem without making it more closed mm -hmm. um they're offering you know there were three main points to this uh, keynote a new version of os 10 uh which is i would say arguably uh the, a bigger improvement to os 10 or bigger changes in os 10 than we saw with mavericks yeah. os 10 yosemite which will be available free in the fall to apple users 
uh, will uh, feature a new UI that is very much a flat UI. But I think the biggest change is the uh, change to Spotlight. Uh, putting yeah. search everywhere, uh, putting it in the middle of the screen, giving Spotlight the capability to search not only into emails, but to show the emails, to show uh, maps along with it. Um, this is a big, big shift in the way OS X works, and I think a smart move. They added along with that, of course, the new uh, iCloud's offering and implied effectively that uh, iCloud would be everywhere available to all apps. Um, and continuity is part of OS X, which is the ability mm -hmm. to... Uh, share what you're doing and even move it to a mobile device to a, an ios device that's in the same network that's a big shift as well and again doubling down on the ecosystem to to, to play in this space you've got to have an iphone and an ipad yeah ab absolutely and i think th this is a big uh shot across the bow of google because so much of the things that we're so impressed with about google such as google now google search the google's cloud offerings they just saying, okay, well, here's the Apple version of all of that stuff, and it's better because it's better integrated, and that's really what we're all about is integration. So we have all the power and the information and the convenience, but it's beautiful, it's integrated, and it all works together. Well, and don't forget the other point that Apple makes about better than Google is it's pri more private than Google, more secure than Google. Exactly. I mean, what we're worried about is we're, running, we're, we're, we're already seeing Google talking about running ads on the Nest, and Apple has basically cut them off at the pass. They're going to make it really easy for developers to build all these home automation. And this cuts this cuts yeah. Google off in a big way, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, they're going to say, we're not, we're never going to run ads. We're going to charge you more. We're going to, yeah. you're going to buy for the people who want to buy stuff and, and have it just work, you yeah. know, and, and, and they're going to make it easier to develop for those things. I think, I think Google has a lot of figuring out to do after this, after this keynote. I mean, Apple set this up by calling the Android ecosystem made toxic hell stew. <laughs> <laughs> and then somehow backed it up yeah. in a way. Yeah. A touch ID for third-party apps. Uh, well, keep imagine, your own keyboards. And imagine being able to walk up to your house, touch your phone, and the oh, door opens in front great. of you. Yeah. You know, that's the... Yeah. So part one was OS 10, 10.10, 10, uh, Yosemite. Uh, and, and by the way, the pricing on iCloud uh, Drive is very competitive with Google's right. own super low pricing. I have to say this is bad news for Dropbox. But Dropbox, remember, continues to serve an Android and a Windows crowd. This is a, this is going to be the Apple crowd and the Apple crowd only, uh, unless Apple makes some move to uh, include these capabilities on other operating systems, and I don't see them doing that. Uh, so it, you're not out of business if you're Dropbox, but you can say goodbye to your That's Macintosh right. users probably in many cases. And, and the issue is, is the Macintosh users are the, the most spendy. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, Apple has collected the, the 450 million people willing to buy for design, buy for convenience, so on and so forth. And that's the you know, that's the real issue that, that you have in the other ecosystems. In addition to OS 10, 10.10, 10, uh, iOS 8, lots of new features uh, there as well. What are the key features, uh, Sarah Lane, you cover iOS on iPad today and i5 for the iPhone. What did you see in iOS 8 that's exciting to you? Well, like I said, the Touch ID is awesome. Opening I mean, that API is huge, and I didn't. I never expected they would do that. I mean, I imagine all the times on iPad today where you go, ah, I have to log into Facebook. Crap, right. never mind. I'm not going to do this right now. A Touch ID would solve so many of those issues. The idea that you can, I mean, I have, what, like 23 photo editing apps in a folder that I can just piggyback those from inside the camera app itself. That is fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. Yeah. yeah. The, what, what do they call it? Extensions? Uh, the capability of uh, of extending your uh, application yeah, into other cool. applications is mm -hmm. very, very important. And something Apple has never done in the iPhone. So these are some big changes under the hood in iOS 8. And it really, I mean, it really cuts down on the switching between apps, which is not hard to do, but it's cumbersome. It It's clunky. It has been for some time. And again, many of these features are features Android has, but, but to do it... Elegantly and securely is something only Apple can do, and I think this is uh, this is going to be very, very important. And fundamentally, because Apple do isn't doing advertising, <laughs> you know, like the, the, there's a right. there's a whole level of privacy that Apple provides when they when they build this because that's not their business model, and it allows them to do a lot of things that that other that a lot of the other folks building these um, aren't doing. I think also we should really look at that constantly saying console level graphics apple is going i think that apple's going to first go after it on the ipad but i think we see an update this year with apple tv that is going to you know an apple tv maybe it's 200 dollars, maybe it's 150 dollars. but the point is is i can see that going head to head with um the playstation with the xbox sure. so on and so forth and and you know you look at the car versus the truck uh metaphor you really see ios becoming the central uh operating system even for power users now I mean, this is a power user operating system, and OS X is 
for the superpower users, the professionals, the hardcore professionals. But you really see iOS being poised to take over as really the, the OS that In matters. many ways, I think that they, they Apple's really viewing the OS X as the legacy that we're going to constantly tie yeah. you back to iOS, but, but you know, and we're not going to take it away, yeah. but I think that it's, a, it's, it's really a legacy solution um, that, they, that they keep on going. Obviously, most of the development work and, and the high performance is moving towards iOS. And by the way, uh, no mention of iBeacon, but iBeacon clearly kind of an important technology in uh, in all of this. Well, a, a, a side note to all this is that the uh, w what we are going to be hearing for the rest of the week is that the conference itself is heavily wired with iBeacons all over the place. So they're going to be showcasing it for developers. Right. If you have the WWDC app, you're going to be using iBeacon. The third part of the triumvirate, uh, in some ways the most exciting for me, uh, new changes to the coding platform, 4,000 new API calls, which, of course, m will be devoted to iHome or whatever they call it, the home implementation to, uh, to all of these new features, um, and a new programming language. For many years, Apple, uh, uh, in the earliest days of uh, the Apple uh, Macintosh, it was a Pascal-based programming language. Um, and then with the acquisition of Next, they jumped mm -hmm. to Objective-C, which was part of the Next Step OS. And in fact, OS X is heavily based on the Next Step Open Step uh, OS. Um, Objective-C has been in use ever since then, as, as uh, uh, Craig said, 20 years now. And a lot of programmers learned it. It's a, basically a variant of C++ or C, but it has mm -hmm. its own unique syntax. Um, and of course, the Xcode IDE is arguably one of the best IDEs uh, in the business and given away free mm -hmm. by Apple to everybody who owns a Macintosh. Um, now they're moving to a new language called Swift, which combines some of the best features of uh, interactive scripting languages like Ruby and Python um, with very high performance, better even than Objective-C itself. Um, this is a significant change. Uh, Apple's developer site is down right now, uh, and I presume that's because they're about to put up uh, documentation for Swift. And I can tell you right now, there'll be a lot of people uh, hitting that site very hard to see what Swift offers to start learning the language. And uh, speaking as somebody who enjoys programming as a hobby, that is a significant uh, tool. That I can see a lot of schools, a lot of know, schools jump, jumping into yep. this because they already have iOS platforms that they're that the students are using. And so being able to, you know, have the students building for that, I think, and, and making it easier and more interactive is going to be. So they do have now on uh, at developer.apple.com, see what's new for developers, learn about the new technologies in iOS 8, OS 10, Yosemite, and the new programming language, which will be part of Xcode 6. Um, developers at the conference are getting iOS 8. They didn't. Did they mention 10, 10 Yosemite? I don't think they're I getting think bits they for did. that. I think they said, I think they said that it was released. Today. Oh yeah, they did. Yeah, That's they did. right. Okay, so uh, lots for developers to look at at this Absolutely. conference uh, this week, and uh, and then we'll all get this in the fall, presumably with new hardware. And I think it makes sense for Apple to separate the hardware announcements. Uh, there's there's a lot to absorb here, huge amount to absorb here. Yeah. Um, and some very interesting uh, uh, new stuff. Um. Anything you guys would like to say? Xcode 6 beta is apparently available. I, uh, if you are a developer, I'll have to, you know, the problem with being a developer is you're immediately NDA'd. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, those of us who have developer accounts may be slow to talk <laughs> yeah, about it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just looking at the very, very high level, they just took over two industries, health and home automation. Just, just like that, I think they've really become the dominant players in, in both of those, at least for now. And the second thing is that Apple has always been uncomfortable with having other companies be major parts of the Apple user experience. And they've really done a lot of sort of bringing that in. If you've been using Dropbox, well, you don't have to anymore because of this. If you've been using uh, uh, Google Drive, then you don't have to use that anymore. You can use this. If you've been using another programming language, well, now you use the Apple programming language. They really are trying to bring everything in here uh, so that you can you never have to leave Apple created products, and the you know the downside of that, of course, is that as users we lose choice. The upside of that is, is that as you continue to close that system, it's a, it's an easier place to operate for the developers. It's easier to operate for the users because you control the entire ecosystem. Um, but it is a you know obviously uh, makes it difficult to you know. And Apple's using their size. I mean, exactly. literally, their those billions of dollars are being used to go. Okay, we can do all of these things, and you can't imagine what next year they'll just look at everything that's out there that's good and they'll just add it into that ecosystem but it'll be in that controlled ecosystem that apple owns what's totally unclear is whether HomeKit will work with existing networks it sounds like apple's developing their own network protocol 
they said uh, they're working with leaders in home automation, and they showed on the screen some big names to give HomeKit a consistent network protocol. I wouldn't be surprised, though, that that's a small update. If you look at a lot of the, the Zigbee-style things, there's, a, there's one device that's really talking to all the devices. So I think a firmware update or, or possibly buying that one small device replaces everything. I don't think you have to replace every fixture. A new hub that could speak just, all, all the All you need is a new hub, an yeah. updated hub to do it, and possibly yeah. even just an updated hub. And the reality is that if you're going to launch a device that's part of a home automation thing, a, a lamp, a smart lamp or something like that, if you don't support... Apple's ecosystem in some way, you're not going to make it. I mean, it's just that simple. All of these uh, special purpose companies that do home automation, they're dispensable, but Apple is not dispensable. Android is almost indispensable, but really Apple is already the leader. So they talked about all these partners and it's all kumbaya, but you know, they went to these companies and said, look, it's our way of the highway, so support our new system. Here it is. And we're going to make it easy for you. And we're going to create one system that everyone's using. And we're going to, you know, and, and the... And, the re and again, I, I guarantee that these, these meetings are, are talking about the fact that the, the statistically the, the iOS users are spending more money. They're the, they're the ones that are going to buy this stuff. They're the ones that are looking for that. It's people like me who have, I've never been able to get a home automation system that I'm happy with because mm -hmm. I want it to work with my iPhone. I want it to be easy. I want to be able to install it myself. I want all those things. I have a Nest, you know, and I have little yeah. bits and pieces of that. And now I'm just waiting. I'm literally, as an iOS user, I'm waiting to buy. <laughs> it's like I'm waiting. I'm waiting. As soon as all the stuff starts coming out, I'm just going to start, you know, adding the locks and adding the lights and all the other stuff. Well, and that's really the the interesting point here, because as somebody with a foot in both worlds, um, I, I, on the one hand, I don't like the idea of a closed proprietary ecosystem. Uh, I think that that's a bad thing in general. Green. And yet, there are things Apple can do with it in terms of security and privacy that you can't do in an open ecosystem. Right. Apple does have market share sufficient to promote this. Um, but at the same time, I, 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 I hate to support something that is so oh. proprietary and closed. And But this is how you get people into it, by offering better functionality, easier usability. Uh, it, it makes it a very compelling choice. And I think for, for people like me who perhaps you know have, have jumped the fold and bought Android devices, they're going to be looking very hard at the next generation iPhone and iPad, at these next generation features. If it provides a smooth interface to home automation, if you have the continuity so you can go from your Macintosh desktop to your portable device in one smooth sweep, well, and, and you're going to be this is very compelling. And with your Apple TV, you're going to say, you know, eventually you're going to you're going to again. I just keep on going back, but that's in, in in the living room, and it's like. You know, it's going to connect to my phone, and I'm going to make phone calls while I'm sitting in my living room. You know, you know, th those are all things. You know that. that if only uh, anyone made phone calls anymore, exactly. then this would really be a killer, <laughs> killer feature. You know, the home automation thing makes me think more than ever that the mythical iWatch is right around the corner because at home is maybe the one place where mm -hmm. my phone isn't right on me. Yeah, it might be on the mm -hmm. counter in the kitchen, or you want yeah. actually something that is connected right. to you. The remote control. Right. Especially, right. especially with Siri integration on the that iWatch, that, that would be killer. But yeah, it's um, it, it's it's really uh, you know you mentioned you feel um, you feel funny inside about <laughs> you didn't say it that way about supporting a close. I essentially do feel a funny inside. Well, it's, it's a closed it's a closed operating, but that but that's part of the choice, right? We have a closed right. one for people who want it closed, and we have an open one for people who want it open. We have. Somewhere in the middle, there's there are going to be and lots of options for. Home and automation. I should point out that there, it's possible, all seems highly unlikely, that Apple will make this open. Uh, but remember, unlikely. they said FaceTime well, was open; they never opened it. I mean, they I don't. They didn't even his, say this was going to be open. No, they yeah right. With this, they didn't even bother. I think it has to be closed, uh, but I don't know for a fact. We're just like assuming that that's how Apple will. Well, will iBeacon do support. It. You know, Android support. Uh, iBeacon, iBeacon supports is a Android. standard, right? So, and and iBeacon is inevitably going to be part of their home automation package right so that part of it at least and then you know the the the, the wemos and the belkins of the world you know belkin the belkins of the world can make their devices support both android phones and iphones and also ibeacon so even the android devices can can work with ibeacon so I, you know i th i think home automation is going to be a mixed bag between open and close and you know really the biggest problem with home automation is that everything is a la carte that's the biggest problem you can you can get you know you can get your your Belkin uh, Crock-Pot that's, you know, part of your home automation system. But then that's one app. And then you have, you know, another app for your Philips Hue. And then you have another app for, you know, and that's, yeah. it's, it's crazy town. You can't.
I suspect like that. what Apple will do is kind of what they did with iTunes, which is we'll make it work with other devices. It'll work best if well, you Well, and the thing Apple. is, I don't think any of these devices are going to be exclusive. I mean, you can definitely build a hub that, that, right. that supports Zigbee and supports the Apple one. All right. Apple's saying is just add add the protocols that allow our systems to work. But with the strongest language I've ever seen in Apple Keynote about Android, about uh, mm -hmm. toxic health stew, I have to think that this is Apple uh, uh, raising, you know, throwing down the gauntlet to Google. We're going to find out in just a few weeks with Google I.O. what Google's response could be. And I imagine there are quite a few people in Mountain View who are scurrying around now to have a response. This is These are all areas where Google has uh, uh, put out feelers, has done a lot. Android's done a lot in this direction but hasn't quite gelled, and I think it's an opportunity for Google to respond. And I think this is the, the, the advantage that Google's had for a long time is their willingness to experiment. They're going to throw stuff out there. They're going to try it. They're going to constantly be, be getting response and making that decision. What Apple showed today is the advantage of owning the whole system and, being, right. you know, and, and having control of that and carefully putting all these pieces together. And I think that that is the... Um, you know, that's what we're seeing is the, the distinction of the two different approaches. And, you know, when we look at some of the challenges that, that Google's had with some of their, you know, their social networking and everything else, I think that there's, um, you know, sometimes that experimentation can be difficult. Let's not forget the challenges that Apple's had with cloud oh. services. <laughs> and social networking. And, and so I would, I would, <laughs> Apple has, I would not close existed. this by saying these are, these are all very promising, very exciting technologies, but we yeah. haven't seen any implementations yet. Right. And the devil is in the details. And, of course, it has to work. Uh, Apple has not always been able to make no. this stuff work. But if they can, I think what Apple has proposed here is uh, a big game changer for Apple users and in general for uh, for anybody who uses mobile technology. Apple has shown the way in many, many respects. It's very you know, exciting. You know what hasn't happened in a while? A bunch of people not knowing what was going to happen before it happened at an Apple event. Yeah, yeah none of the rumors none of, were Some right. of this stuff right. uh, yeah. staying under wraps until right. literally uh, uh, the, you know, execs on stage unveiling it is, that hasn't happened in years. It's a little easier to keep developers at Apple quiet than it is to keep Chinese suppliers of hardware. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, right. right. Exactly. And right. Uh, I think that there's a, Tim wields a fairly uh, big stick when it comes to uh, in, in her internal leaks. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're, what you're seeing here. I am, uh, I'm very encouraged by, uh, by this and I, and I'm really looking forward to, a good competitive war this fall uh, between uh, Android, between uh, iOS, and frankly, even between uh, Microsoft. I think Microsoft has a play here as well. Um, and, of course, co a competition is good for everybody, no That's matter right. how you feel about any of these platforms. Um, anybody else uh, have anything to add before we wrap this just, thing up? Just one quick thing going back to the beginning of the presentation. We have seen one thing that we've actually seen it, and that's the design of OS X. Yosemite, and that was beautiful. I thought I thought that was a really appealing user interface, just visually. I agree, I agree, yeah. and I'm particularly excited about using the new search features. By the way, there's another example of Google out in the cold. It looks like Bing is going to be doing the back yeah. end, uh, and, and it and it is a way for Apple to keep you away from Google. If you can get the Wikipedia, the knowledge graph, all of the information that you want without leaving the operating system, without even going on. Uh, you know, a, a browser, I think that's going to mm -hmm. be very big for Apple. And I still think 2015 or 2016, we see Apple with its own search engine. I think Apple somewhere in the You've depths of those. you got to think they're doing it. They, they, you know, yeah. this is a huge part of their business that is yeah. a external to Apple. I, I just don't see them leaving that, um, you know, leaving that out for forever. Mm -hmm. yeah. OS X Yosemite out this fall. iOS 8 out this fall. A uh, whole new developer framework. Xcode 6 using a new language, Swift, out this fall, what we don't know is what hardware will be out this fall, but I have a feeling this is going to be a very exciting time. I want to thank you for joining us in our special coverage of the WWDC keynote. Mike Elgin, TNT, uh, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 1700 UTC, your daily dose of tech news. I'm sure we'll see a lot more about this tomorrow and in the days Definitely. Uh, to come. Thank you for being here, yeah. Mike. Appreciate it. Thanks. Alex Lindsay, Mac Break Weekly. You stick around. we got to do uh, yep. Mac Break Weekly uh, in just a bit. Renee Ritchie and Andy Anako and Jason Snell, I think it's Jason's involved, are heading up from uh, the, uh, the keynote, and they will be here as quickly as they can. Uh, no demo room to slow them down. So. Right. If, we'll be if, tracking them with Find My Friends. Uh, yeah, I think the I think the we'll see a quick stop at In and Out, and then then they'll be on their way then, up here. And June nineteenth, by the way, uh, we're gonna have the first fi online Final Cut user group. So uh, oh, we're, we're bringing in some of the top guys and everything else. So just if, if you follow me on Twitter, I'll I'll have more more information. At it's just Alex at, Lindsay. Yes, uh, but um, it'll be the, it's a whole new new approach to. 
to user groups. So Sarah, Elaine, and I will be back tomorrow with the uh, iPad today at a mm -hmm. special time. We've 10, preempted. 10 a.m. Pacific? No, 11 a.m. Right, that. But, uh, you could try, but I won't be You won't be here. Be here. <laughs> 1800 UTC. Noted. Yes. <laughs> and, of course, you'll be back tonight with Tech News Tonight, and I'm I sure will. you'll have a lot more about this. We'll have a chance to look at what the reaction is I got to think there's going to be a lot of negatives from people who said, I wanted a Mac Mini. Yeah. I wanted, uh, I don't know what Th they wanted. Those are people watch. who are, are refuse to understand what a developer conference is. Exactly, exactly. That, uh, you know, if you, if you do it, you're just, you know, you want a million dollars too, but you're not going <laughs> to get it today. But where's my pony? <laughs> And thank you all for uh, joining us. Uh, we will be back uh, with more coverage. Uh, this is, of course, a Christmas Day, but we've got uh, later in the year, we've got probably at least one or two big announcements Yay. from Apple. <laughs> we'll be back next with uh, Google I.O. and live coverage of the keynote there. I think that will be just as interesting, just as uh, exciting. And I expect uh, a little bit of toxic hell. <laughs> stew. Yeah. Stew. Uh, from hell stew. Uh, Being response to a Google's, there it is, toxic, at toxic hell stew. <laughs> hell stew. Oh. Hell stool is something else. With, I didn't uh, really preview that before I threw it on the screen. Sorry okay. about that. <laughs> yeah, that, that was I a distracted toxic hell them. Stool. Yeah. yeah. We thank you for joining us, and we will see you next time with uh, anytime news breaks right here at live.twit.tv. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining us. See you later.